Eh, who needs to sync up the countdown music with the countdown timer anyway? That's that's it's too complicated for me. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. The long-awaited return. Well, maybe long-awaited for some of you. The long-awaited return of my presence in X Plane 12. If you have been patiently waiting, and I know there are a few of you out there. This stream is for you. Guys, I'm happy to bring you a Tolis pre-release A320 Neo stream. Now, I know there's been a couple out there already. I've watched a few myself. I've watched some of um, XP72, watched some of Q8. I watched uh, a review from Mr. Blue Games himself. I was out on the road. I was actually going to do this flight yesterday, but I got called do some real world neoing around and I said hey you know what what better time to uh, I mean that just worked out perfectly got to fly a brand new 320 neo yesterday right out of the factory I uh, got to fly that one around all day yesterday I had a super long day of flying got back late last night and got the stream ready to go this morning so I hope you guys are ready I got my coffee here this is going to be a, a it's going to be a little bit of a different format on today's stream so what I really want to do is Yes, we know the airplane will fly A to B. We know Tolos does a great job with all the normal systems, getting everything going for, like I said, A to B flying. We've seen a couple A to B flights already. We're going to do an A to B flight today. We're going Burbank to Phoenix. However, we're going to do a little bit more of what I used to do back in the day on this channel. We're going to do some flight testing. Now, we're not going to do a full-blown flight test, do all the alternate direct law and all that stuff. We might dabble into a little bit of it. But I'm actually going to, I'm going to show you why I think X-Plane 12 is still very near and dear to a lot of people out there. And that's because some of the, the tools that this simulator provides you, when you combine it with high quality add-ons such as this airplane right here, which I've been impressed thus far, um, I think it's it might come uh, come as a surprise to some of you. So I can't wait to, uh, to to show that to you guys. I hope you guys are ready to get this show on the road. Cam321 in chat. What's up, man? Good to see you. Yes, Cam, I was actually just in LA yesterday. Again, thinking about all my L.A. fans out there, Cali Simmer, Mike's out there as well, Cam. I was in L.A. yesterday. I had to wait 45 minutes for a gate on taxiway. Uh, I should, Charlie, was I on Charlie? Yeah, I took the land at 2-4 right. I took a nice little uh, mental photo of the in and out down there, all the good uh, double-doubles with fries and all that. And then we took the, what was it, the north route, bridge route, one of those standard taxi routes in L.A. And then I sat on taxiway Charlie for 45 minutes. Missed a commute home. Got on the second one, though. It was a good time. Though. Carta Jawol is in the chat. Oh, my goodness. Carta Jawol has joined the chat. Carta, good to see you, man. It's been a long time. I hope you're well, dude. I uh, hope you're getting caught up with uh, family life and work life and all that good stuff, man. Always a pleasure to see Carta. This is like going back to the roots of this channel of x -Plane. Carta's here. Slam Cannon's in the house. Slam, I still haven't responded to you because I'm just a total a-hole. I'm sorry, my friend, but I did not forget about you. I actually messaged a couple of my buddies um, about your message that you sent to me. I haven't got any good information back to pass on yet. It's just kind of like, yeah, I haven't really heard of anybody. I don't really know of anybody in that scenario yet, but I'm keeping my ear to the uh, to the ground in case I do pick up on anything. I will definitely get back to you, Slam. Captain Tom in the house as well. Benny, Benny. Kelly Simmer starting off right again. 10 gifted subs. Guys, if you pick up a gifted membership from Cali Simmer, shout him out. Let him know you're very appreciative of that. That is very generous of Mr. Cali Simmer. Thank you, man. I really appreciate you, Cali Simmer, for the 10 gifted sub memberships. You guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you for the support. Good afternoon from the UK. John Ho, good to see you. Ryan Johnson, always a pleasure. Yo, V1, you should do the spirit flight that operates MCO to see our Charleston, West Virginia. I don't think I've ever been to Charleston, West Virginia. I don't think so. I might have. Ryan, interesting. I, you know, I almost was going to fly East Coast because um, I, I wanted to fly in some of that weather. But the reason we're in Burbank today is I'm going to pause the alert box here for a few, min a few minutes here uh, as we let the wonderful sub memberships uh, go on through. And uh, thank you, Kelly Simmer, again for that. But the reason I picked Burbank is because recently you guys knew or know that I did a recurrent training in the sim. And we did a practice flight. We basically went to uh, Vegas, Burbank, Burbank back to Vegas. Today we're going to do Burbank, but I want to do something that I have been showed by you know, my check airman and stuff in the sim, like, hey, this is what happens if this happens. And what that situation is, is an engine failure off of runway 15 in Burbank. Where do you go? There's rising terrain, you're low level, it's a very congested area. 
They say you're right on base for two four right in LAX. I've never done that in real life. Never, obviously, never lost an engine out of Burbank on one five. But that's what they always say in the sim. Hey, when you're in Burbank one five, plan for the two four right LA. Plan for the two four right LA. It's there all the time. So we're actually going to execute that today. We'll do. A, that's going to take a little bit of time. We're kind of work through a little bit of the emergency there, and then we're going to basically just kind of quick turn us maybe we'll launch it right at right there at LA and then we'll fly on to Phoenix so um, actually you know what we could do we could actually probably just save our spot on the runway we'll do that with the tollets and then we'll do a normal flight uh, we'll do some maneuvers as well and we'll, I want to show you guys some of the aerodynamic things and, and uh, we're going to test something else out that I, I want to do on landing as well so we're going to test that so Vance higher I believe I'm saying that right. Thank you for the $2 super chat as well, my friend. Always a pleasure. Thank you for the support. Alert box is back on, so I don't miss any now. But thank you very much. Appreciate that, Vance. And uh, Brian Rossman says, Hi, everyone. Finally, a Pratt & Whitney 320 Neo for Sim. Yes. This is one of the mo most, uh, one of the things I'm really, really excited about is we have a proper Pratt & Whitney uh, Neo. Now, the, um, and I say proper because... Uh, uh, the only other Neo in X-Plane would be a Neo mod, so you could put the, the cart engine mod on uh, that we used to do in X-Plane 11, and, uh, but you could have, but you still were flying the Flight Factor 320, right? So this is a true 320 Neo, and we have the proper Pratt & Whitney engines, which in my opinion, if I got to pit both of them against each other, the Pratt & Whitney versus the uh, Leap, I'm going to pick Pratt & Whitney all day because... You know what? Bigger is better, and this diameter is a little bit bigger than the uh, than the uh, the leap. So, um, now that being said, I understand that Pratt and Whitney has a fair share of issues with engines and neo engines in particular i have seen it firsthand many of you knew uh or that have been around following me for a while know that I, every time i used to take off in the neo with the prats i would have the high vibe checklist up i wouldn't have my chart up i wouldn't have anything else up but i would have my contingency for high vibe and engine fail ready to go because that was when these engines first were launched from pratt there were a ton of issues um a matter of fact i just had a high vibe the other day that uh well, it's interesting. We can talk about that later. But Carter says leap for the win. Ah, come on, Carter. Bigger is better, my friend. Bigger is better. Captain Tom says Pratt's look better. See, and Slam Cannon says Pratt looks better. Look, you're, you're outnumbered by the mods in chat there, Carter. Looks like uh, Pratt's going to win this one. So, Benny, Benny, good to see you, man. You were uh, November 01. Uh, oh, you were number one. <laughs> November 01, geez. You were number one on the Tolis community poll to stream the 320 Neo. Benny, Benny, thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I did not even know that was going on. Somebody posted, uh, maybe it was you. There was a couple posts in the Discord saying there was a poll going on. And I was honored to see my name up there at the top of the list for flying the 320. 20 Neo. So, guys, thank you for voting for me. I didn't even know that was going on. And yes, indeed, we are here. And yes, of course, full disclosure, Tolis did send me this aircraft uh, to pre release stream to you guys. I believe the airplane is coming out scheduled for 320, March 20th, which see what they did there march 20th 320 kind of like that so it should be coming around the corner i believe the price is right around 90 dollars. i don't quote me on that that's just what i heard i think that's what it is um but again full disclosure yes i was sent this airplane from tolis so we're going to give it a fair shake today we're going to do some testing we're going to do some neoing and then we're going to just do a normal regular flight now the funny thing is i haven't done a normal landing in this airplane yet so the landing that you saw in the thumbnail i was actually doing it on the emergency electrical configuration uh, yeah it was just so i haven't done an actual normal landing yet which will be interesting to see but x-plane has been this is the last thing and then we're going to get going here x-plane has been and i've been saying it myself you know x-plane is the sim of flight dynamics flight dynamics flight dynamics of the sim so today we're really going to put that to test and i hope you guys are ready to experience it with me Listo. Gustavo, good to see you, my friend. Uh, Gustavo, I know you're a big X-Plane fan as well, so this stream is, uh, is going to be right up your alley, man, right up your alley. Thank you for joining today. Welcome on board, Gustavo. I uh, hope you're doing well. hope you're having a, a wonderful Sunday. Uh, Jeremy Harvey, good to see you, man. Always a pleasure to see you. Jeremy, there's a new Mentor Pilot video out about the Atlas Air 767 crash in Houston. This is unrelated. You need to watch it. Let me know how it is. I want to watch it. I know some personal information about that um so i'm going to watch that video myself probably later today but i want to hear your take on it as well so i know you are very into the uh, investigations and all that mentor pilot does a fantastic job with his videos anyway so looking forward to watching that one uh but let me know what you think jeremy i'm going to watch it myself and then we could see uh 
if we can kind of share some notes. All right, here we go. The nacelles are massive. Yeah, the, the Pratt & Whitney is the biggest 320 family engine uh, available. So it's bigger than, obviously, than the CEO engines, and it's also bigger than the CFM Leap. I can't remember the diameter off the top of my head, but I, I know it's a small margin, but I know for a fact it is a little bit larger. And I'm 6'1", and I could basically stand in here. So I don't know what that is in inches or in non-freedom units or whatnot, uh, but it's it's pretty darn close. Uh, massive fan blades. Everyone that flies the Neo for the first time, whether they're new pilots on OE or whatnot, everyone wants to get a picture of the of the engine standing in front of it because it is it is a pretty large engine. And then you see, you know, my buddy who flies a triple seven. He's like, "Oh, you think that's cool? Check this out." And it's like, "Oh, all right, well." Never mind. I'll go back to my little narrow body 320 Neo. But yeah, the doesn't compare to the Trip 7, but for the narrow body 320, it is a fantastic, uh, fantastic motor. And the sounds are really good. Now, while I'm down here, I haven't actually done a full exterior. I will say right out of the gate, and this is kind of a live review. I'm not going to spend too much time live reviewing. There's plenty of live reviews out here on this airplane already. But if you guys remember when the Tolis released the 319 for X-Plane, 11 it was nowhere near the texture quality that it is now and then this airplane is by far the best textured and modeled airplane that i've seen tolus uh put out yet i mean i would almost i'd like to see some uh maybe some updates to 321 and it's been in the cockpit really really where it shines is right here let's go now i can't really see obviously because we're in the lovely x-plane shadowing right now but this cockpit does look actually pretty darn good and i'm going to show you guys my settings real quick and then we're going to fire it up here uh the general no graphic settings so this is what i'm rocking basically maxing everything out except this guy right here i don't think it really makes a difference that's like chat let's see does that really make a difference uh why is this one down anyway close proximity object creator values increase graph yeah we'll just leave that one at medium uh shadow and rendering are high everything else is pretty much maxed out so that's my settings i will say this cockpit does look very good that engine doesn't look much different to the 321 uh what do you mean we uh you talking about the 320 321 yeah no the 320 321 basically the same engine just uh deration a little bit more power all right let's oh and i saw somebody david says i think someone they use the bus switch backup speed scale and i believe we can let's do this here general settings is that an option let's see situation uh has bus switches yes we'll talk about that because i've used that in fact i've actually used that in the real airplane which if you have it is pretty cool uh we'll talk about that the backup speed scale speed out this was a big thing when p3d was uh when fs labs went brought p3d their 320 and all that they had the backup speed scale simulated and all that so we're going to talk about that as well i've actually used this in the real airplane uh, mostly just not out of necessity but as a troubleshooting uh situation and then we use it in the sim during recurrent all the time basically what this does is it gives you an aoa really that's it it's an aoa indicator essentially so shows your aoa it shows you if you're if you're fast and if you're getting close to critical aoa that's really it so oh the quality that the, the texture ah okay thanks carta you mean the the engine doesn't look different to the 321 engine uh from them you know i haven't you're probably right there carta i haven't uh i haven't flown the 321 neo but that would be something we should probably check but i was talking really from like the cockpit standpoint to me it just seems like it's really been improved, but I might be, uh, maybe I'm seeing things, but even the overhead looks pretty good. So let's fire it up. I got the sounds all the way up. Hope you guys will be able to hear everything good. My sounds and X-Plane just don't seem as crisp um, as they used to, but here we go. Battery one, battery two. We'll go ahead and turn on the external power. That's coming online. Look at that. Screens are coming online. Let's make sure everything's max bright here. I do have reflections on. I think it adds a little bit to the cockpit, um, but you may want to turn them off if you don't like it. Uh, but I do have the reflections on the screen, which I think look pretty cool. Hello, sir. Just want to say thank you for your streams on the Throttle Tech V3. Can't wait for mine to arrive. Hope to see it today. Uh, KFC Turbo will welcome. And yes, indeed, my friend, you will see the Throttle Tech. We have it ready to go. And I'm going to be working on a binding video for the 320 Throttle Tech and X Plane. I do have mine completely bound. I made a binding video for Microsoft. I will make one for X Plane. I just haven't had the time. So. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. 
we'll go ahead and turn off the uh, the expat. We are on VATSIM, which, you know, in order to declare an emergency, you have to be on VATSIM. We have to have a center uh, line to do the emergency. So if we do an emergency into Los Angeles, we may have to disconnect from VATSIM. Anyway. Does the throttle tilt work with the Phoenix? Yes, it does. Works flawlessly with the Phoenix, Captain Sleep. Works flawlessly. Okay, let's continue with our overhead flow. Cruise supply on, ground control on, CVR test. Beautiful. A Deers 1, 2, and 3. We'll get that. We have a nice new A Deers panel up there. That is the newer version uh, that you're we're accustomed to seeing, the older one in the Phoenix. Uh, we'll go strobe to auto, nav to position 1, seatbelts off, no smoking auto, emergency exit lights, arm, landing elevation is auto, two fault lights. That looks good. Everything else is pretty much the same. No ACT tanks or anything on the 320. We've got our galley commercial. Everything looks good there. We'll do a fire test number 1. Fire test number 2. Fire test number three. Beautiful. Up the right-hand side. Everything looks good. Lights out concept here. And one thing we do want to do, PA. I kind of like that they have this not uh, out and illuminated. And I've mentioned it before, but basically the reason on the third radio panel here that we have this PA knob out and the volume at halfway, this is to record the flight attendant announcements on the black box or the CVR. So um, if this button is off, you're supposed to, on your initial flight of the day and on your through flight, you're supposed to make sure that that stays on so that can be recorded to the black box, like I said. Audio switching into normal, that's basically just a remote control, basically, which RMP you're looking at, but um, not really important. Toilet. No one's in there right now, which that's pretty good because it's an early morning flight out of Burbank. The lab is typically occupied at early morning, which, man, do you get on those early 6 a.m. flights, long haul somewhere? You need to do the fart removal procedure, which we talked about a couple of streams ago. Is it true you can dual engine start the Neo? Mr. Swedish Moto. <laughs> You cannot dual start, but you can dual motor for engine cooling, which we will talk about here when we start up the engines. Uh, allegedly, there was a flight that was a reposition flight operating under Part 91 where the captain allegedly tested to see if you could start both engines at the same time, allegedly. And when he allegedly moved both masters to the start position, it triggered a bunch of faults and printed out like a 40-page engine start fault summary. So not recommended. There might be some mod somewhere. Again, this is an Airbus where they're different across the globe. Every operator can have different options. I think I've heard of rumors of being able to just go one, two, and then the airplane knows it will auto start one first and then the second engine. But as far as my personal experience with the, air, the Neos that I fly, we start one engine at a time. But we do dual motor them. Captain Geo, good to see you, man. Hope you're well, Captain Geo. He says, uh, hi there, Captain. Hope all is well with you and the fam. Geo, 35 months of support, dude. I appreciate you. Geo, I hope you are well, man. I hope everything is good. I haven't, you know, I miss uh, chatting with y'all, especially over on XP stream. I've been so busy, man. It's just been absolutely crazy. But Geo, I hope you're well, man. Hope your family is good as well. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend, dude. Thank you for the support. And Mr. Max Rank coming in with 37 months. 37 months, three years and counting. Max, good to see you back, my friend. Good to see you back, Max. Hope you're well, dude. Hope you're, uh, I guess what, St. Louis is getting pretty hammered up there with the weather lately, right? So, man, good to see you, dude. All right. Looks like he also tested the printer. Uh, yes, the printer does work, which is pretty sweet. Let me finish setting up the airplane here. We're going to get going here. Everything else looks good. Uh, our doors are armed already. That's fine. Um, I just had an auto. But let's come down here, and we're going to go to the init. We're going to do a init request. Um, that we're going to do data link. So this actually connects to SimBrief, which is pretty cool. We do all that good stuff. And we can get ATIS. And we can do departure ATIS. Let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to get a received message of Burbank. What? ATIS is not available. I wonder if that's because... What if I do weather ATIS, Burbank, Phoenix, and Tucson... Uh, let's go ahead and do a just let's do this way. I think if that sim is on, they'll actually print it. You can actually get the message and print it because I've done that and it's pretty cool. You can see our uplink here. Here we go. Burbank, Phoenix, Tucson, the alternate, Spirit Wings 357, cost index 11390. That looks good. What we always have to change in the uh, in any uplinked flight plan, we got to make sure we put in our SID and our STAR. So we're going to do that here as well. Let me just see if I can get the proper ATIS. Let's go back. Let's go to received messages. And we got a bunch of them. Uh, not available. Phoenix is not available. So they're not available. So I wonder if that's because no one is online on VATSIM. 
normally I've actually had that uh, I think I already did the flight on it all right so I've had the ATIS print off before but we just we don't have it uh oh now I cleared our flight plan Card member for 41 months let's go on the milestone 41 months captain or car, captain cartage a wool dude that's insane man 41 months <laughs> Dude, good. Thank you so much, Carter. You've been around. You've done a lot for the community, man. I'm glad to see you back on a live stream, man. Glad to see you back on the live stream, man. Good to see you. Milestone, 41 months. Can anyone top 41? That's a long time. All right. So since we can't get that, that's fine. We'll go back to McDo, Atsu, uh, AOC. Make sure there's nothing new. Okay. We viewed everything. That's fine. We'll just keep that on the flight plan page. Let's go ahead and put in our SID and STARS. Uh, we don't need that. Let's go Burbank departure runway one five. We're on the slap two departure and the transition is Blythe for the Hydra. So we're gonna go Blythe and We're gonna insert that and we're basically it's a manual leg out to rave Blythe and then we're gonna pick up Phoenix arrival I'm not sure what they're landing right now. Let's just say they're landing the ILS 8 on the Hydra no via Blythe transition insert. Let's go ahead and look through here. Make sure we got everything synced up. We do. Beautiful. That looks good. Phoenix runway eight. Uh, you can still print the METAR. ATIS pull from VATSIM. No ATIS online. No ATIS. METARs work without an ATIS. METARs work without an ATIS. So can I get a METAR? Let me try that. Maybe that's what I did. I know I got it to print before. Weather ATIS. METAR. That's what I need. Thank you. Thank you. Whoever said that? Thank you. Uh, Doran, thank you. Because I know I did it before. I know I did it before. Harry gifting 10 more memberships to the channel. Harry, thank you so much for your support, man. Kawatamundi salute. Right back at you, dude. Thank you so much. Dude. Appreciate you. I'm going to pause the alert box once again here. Uh, as we go through the uh, new memberships. Guys, if you pick one up, thank you. Make sure you thank Harry. Thank you again, Harry. Very kind of you. Appreciate that support, man. Very, very kind of you. All right, here's our new METAR. Check this out. Print. I wonder where this came from. ATIS Burbank. Here it comes. It's going to print them all out. And it puts them right up here. Not available, not available. But we have, let's see, 1 4, 30 02, zero wins. Pretty nice day here in Burbank, which is contrary to what's been happening lately. I'm just waiting for the last one to come through. That's the one I want. That is the last one. Had the printer all jammed up. I wonder if this printer runs out of paper. That would be pretty cool if they could simulate that. Here we go. There it is. Metar Burbank. If you guys seen any pictures or any shorts videos from the members that uh, are on this channel of the real world cockpit, this is what we do. We do a lot of printing. We do a lot of putting paper up. I, I refer to some pilots as paper hangers. Sometimes I like to bring little sticky things and hang paper all over the cockpit. It kind of drives me nuts. But this is a very, very common place to put a clearance, an ATIS, uh, anything important amendment. So this is right smack dab where it should be. Burbank. We know zero wind, 10 miles, clear, 1-4. It doesn't get any more standard than that. So that looks good. Let's do what is important here. We're going to do a secondary. So uh, the secondary, normally we do Burbank, Burbank, or departure, departure. But because of Burbank and the way it's laid out, the best option in case of a abnormal really is Los Angeles. At least that's what I have been told. I said, well, if I'm burning on fire and my wing's about to fall off, I'll probably just make a right 180 and land on the, what is it, the, that short runway. But I've been told that that's not the best option. They say go to L.A. Everybody says go to L.A. So I'm going to show you how I've been taught to set this specific departure up, and then we're actually going to try it. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to select the ILS 24 right in Los Angeles on an emergency. We're going to do no star, no via. Basically, that's just going to put the basic waypoints in there for the ILS. We'll insert that. With that in there, we need to go secondary perf. Remember, all we care about in the event of emergency here is the arrival, which Burbank, LA is probably going to have very similar weather. So we'll just zero the winds out like it shows here in Burbank. Temperature of 1.4. Uh, I'm actually very curious to, to fly this because I don't know. I've never, like I said, I've always been told this is the best option. Never actually done it in the sim, so let's 
can only make us better, right? Q and H is 3012. So 3012 is set the barrow for 24 right ILS. I actually have my real world charts with me sitting next to me, but let's pull it up here. LAX. I do like the EFB integrated into the window here. This is very good. Uh, pretty nicely done. Uh, approach ILS 24 right. I feel like I just live in LA recently with all my flying that I've done. LA, and you can kind of see our position. So let me zoom in on this. This is kind of what we're what I've been talking about. Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. So here's Burbank. If you have an engine failure or fire, you really don't want to turn, right? Because you've got high terrain on all sides. You're sitting in this bowl over here. So departing one five, the single engine procedure actually is fly heading one six zero, which basically shoots you right down this valley, and it does put you on a perfect base for two four right. You can see an intermediate uh, fix there, Merce, and the final approach fix of Kobe. So we're gonna try this out. We're gonna see how it works for us today. But um, that's, uh, that's why we're setting it up. Now, what we do need is the mins down here. Two four right is 322. I should know that. I just landed on that runway yesterday. 322 in the barrow is set for the secondary. Secondary is done. Rad nav, I will hard tune. Uh, I'm not going to hard tune Van Nuys. That's fine. We're going to leave everything auto tune there. Progress page. Let's put Burbank in here. Boom. That is set. And actually, hell, let's put LA. Because if we have an engine failure fire, I just want to know where the, my airport is. So LA is set there. Perf page. We'll do that here in a minute. Init B. We need to get the init page. Oh, it's already loaded up. It pulls it from Simbrief, which is pretty darn cool. Let's look at our loading performance. And look, it did. It loaded it directly from Simbrief, which that is a welcome addition. I know a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of y'all really like the Simbrief integration. I do too. I think it's pretty neat. Um, I also like doing things manually when it comes to uh, to some of the Sim stuff, which you can set. But right now, I have it to sync to Simbrief. And look at that. Pulled everything right out of Simbrief. Initialized the weights. Absolutely awesome. Uh, we could see our zero fuel 137.5, 29.3. All right, that works. What is our, so then we'll go perf. And this is probably my favorite part of this. Um, I want to do a flaps three. I'll show you what we have to do. We're gonna do a flaps three toga, but let's do an uplink. Let's do takeoff data request and let's see what it brings us here. This is, I've mentioned this when I did the 321 stream. This is nearly identical to how my operator gets takeoff data and i wish we could get takeoff data like this in other airplanes since like the phoenix in particular um i just think this is it's not because i'm lazy and it's how we do it but um so now we've got takeoff data uplink so we'll do receive takeoff and we could see here our information look it's already defaulting to a flap three i don't know if that's because i selected it or not flap three and we're not going to do a flex if you want to do a flex you would press this uh, button here, but we're not. We're just gonna go right here and we're gonna insert that uplink. And now we've got our speeds, which they do match here. 27, 27, 31, flaps three, toga packs off is our takeoff. Engine out acceleration altitude for us on our engine out SID, our engine out acceleration is actually 1778. So let's call it 1770. That's our engine out acceleration altitude, which was gonna be a factor. Our fault scenario, I have an engine two fire at 150 feet. Now I wonder if I should, or 150 knots, I wonder if I should change that to a failure. Should I do a rollback? What do you guys wanna see? You wanna see a fire or a failure? Fire or failure? Fire or failure on this takeoff? You guys let me know. Uh, I'm, gonna conf I'm gonna start the APU while we wait, so. Let's go ahead and get the APU fired up. We got our fuel on board. That's coming on. That's coming on. Boom. Let's make sure it is balanced. Fuel is balanced. Done. And APU master. Fire that fails. Fire. Okay. Well, Captain Tom, let's see the rollback. Fire, fire, fire. <laughs> fire always. Okay. Fire it is. Severe damage separation. <laughs> DFW spotter. I wish that was an option. Man, I used to. So my a good friend of mine was a... Uh, a sim guy for the 7.5. And he was a contract sim guy, so he did a couple uh, different air, uh, airplanes or air airlines. And I got to go sit in a 7.5 sim, and we did we did a severe damage separation. Oh boy, why are we rolling? Er, brakes are not set. That's that APU thrust kicking in. <laughs> 
I think everyone wants a failure, not a fire. Yeah, Carter, I know, right? I should just do a failure now. Dimitri, I saw you pop in here. Let me scroll back up, man. Where are you at? Dimitri, greetings from Vancouver. Question, if you drive a Lambo on a dirt ro county road full of potholes, do you still get the Lambo experience? Jeez. Oh, I know where you're going, man. I know where you're going. <laughs> Welcome, Dimitri. I hope I was aligned, too. That was that APU thrust, man. Just pushed us forward. We're good. Brakes are set now. And APU is on. We'll go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and disconnect from ground power. And let's go ahead and pull the ground power, which you guys have seen this before, which is pretty cool. We'll go to the mech push button. We'll go ahead and disconnect ground power. Other ground services. Uh, we have our fuel. We have our cargo. We don't need de-icing. Uh, we are going to do pushback here momentarily. So that is good. We have terrain on. Let's get terrain on ND. Top altitude is we'll set 10,000 feet here just for now. I know we're not going to get to 10,000 feet. No ATC on except Denver and Salt Lake, so we should be fine there. 122.8 is on. We are on that. ATC is transponder, transponder mode. Uh oh. OMG. So my daughter is watching with me right now, and when you said fire or failure, she said two words to describe my life right NW. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Simmer, that's funny, man. Thanks for sharing. Thank you for the support. Two words to describe her life right now. Uh oh, man. I, I wonder. Uh, I mean, I always. I don't know how old your daughter is. You don't have to disclose it, but I know I got two young, two young ones, a three and a one and a half, almost two. So it just when they get older, man, I hear it's exciting. Fire or failure. <laughs> All right. Tol Tolis D I says custom animation. Gustavo, I know. I saw it. It looks pretty good. That's pretty cool. I did see it. Oh man, everyone is a uh, land in L.A. We probably, uh, we probably don't need uh, to be on that sim if we're gonna do an emergency because we might get spanked by somebody out here. But we'll do our best. All right. Uh, what did he say the METAR was? I'm sorry, I'm getting all distracted. Thirty twelve. Thirty the METAR barrel. Thirty twelve. 3012, 3012, I have it all synced up. Are you guys ready? I'm ready to get out of here. Beacon light is on. And let's go ahead and do a pushback straight back. And I don't think anyone's landing around here, but I'll make a call. He's out of here. We're going to be blocking 1-5. Burbank traffic, Spearbank 357. We're pushing off Gate Bravo 2. We're going to be blocking 1-5 for about two minutes, Burbank. All right, so we're going to push straight back. This is a real-world uh, scenario here. You do block the runway. And Southwest gets pissed when you do this. But uh, 100 feet straight back, or 100 meters straight back. Request push back. It's going to do its thing. We're going to get the throttle tech cam online. We'll wait for the truck to come up. Good thing we didn't go into the building there. And then we'll taxi out. We'll brief. And don't let me forget to save the state before takeoff. Because we want to save the state before takeoff. Is it, is it normal feel like you forgot everything one month after your typewriting? Yes. 100% normal. Brakes release, clear to push. That was aggressive. Okay, let's talk about dual cooling in the Pratt & Whitney Neo. Now, this is only a function of the Pratt & Whitney. Basically, has to, you, want to, you want to have a straight shaft, right? We can get super technical and talk about all kinds of things, but this is a geared turbo fan, and basically, you want to keep a straight shaft. So... What we do, the dual cooling basically makes each engine simultaneously, uh, how do I word this without getting technical? Gustavo, you probably have a better dis description, but there's extremely tight tolerances on these engines and to make sure everything stays uniform and within limits, they've introduced the dual cooling function to keep everything, uh, as close as they can to controlled within limits, if that makes sense. Maybe on a longer flight, we'll actually dig into the book and I'll talk to you all about it. But uh, park brake is set. APU bleed is on. And now watch when I go to ignition start here on the engine master. We see that dual cooling is available. Now in the real airplane, this is not always available. Depending on the temperature of the engine, if it is just, you know, maybe if it's sat overnight and it's really cold out, you may not need dual cooling. And if you attempt to dual cool, you'll actually get a dual cooling fail. 
But uh, in this particular instance, we have dual cooling available. So we'll go up here, we'll press the dual cooling push button, we'll turn that on. Now we've armed the dual cooling. You must arm the dual cooling in order for it to work. Now, when we start engine one, we're basically going to motor number one and number two around eight to ten percent N1. So let's go ahead and watch it here. You can see that. Boom, boom. Or N2, excuse me, I said 10% N1, that would be way too much. But uh, So we got 10% N2, and they are cooling. And sometimes I've actually seen the, the quote-unquote cooling procedure. It actually raises the temperature of the engine. I, I've seen it on the line. I don't know really behind that, but there you go. Look at that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You could have done that with the Valeris Airbus crew did and bumped the terminal. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Now it's spinning up. Let me make sure my sounds. I'm going to bump up the engines all the way. You can see the cooling is now to zero. Very good startup sequence, very realistic. Wait for the avail. That's a nice bus transfer sound. It's almost identical to the real airplane. Avail, let's go ahead and turn number two. Now you can see if we didn't dual cool, you would have to sit here for another 30 seconds before starting. The temp should increase because you're blowing air back. So any hot air in the combustion and turbines is going back to, get EG, to the EGT centers. Aha, thank you, Gustavo. So back in, like in the old days in the Metro Liner, you'd actually have to get out and spin the prop, like what, 20 something times or whatever, after shutdown. Slightly different reasons, but similar. These are Pratt & Whitney's. So before dual cooling was an option from Airbus on the Pratt's, you would sit in the alley blocking traffic for almost eight or nine minutes because you might have a 45 second cooling time for number one, then what, another 45 seconds to start. Then you'd have another 45 second cooling time for number two, then another 45 or whatever it takes to start the second engine, then after start. So it was a very lengthy, lengthy process and it would congest uh, it would congest the alleyways and all that stuff, and it just wasn't very uh, wasn't very conducive to high traffic airports. So then they, they came out with a dual cooling function, which made your life a lot easier. So basically, now you're ready to go. We got two good starts. So with two good starts, we're going to go engine mode two, normal. The one thing I cannot bind is the arm. So we're going to arm that, and we'll get the flaps here in a second. I'm going to turn the APU bleed off dual cooling off we're going to do a packs off takeoff but we're going to use the apu for that as well so we're going to just leave the apu running but the apu bleed will remain off dual cooling push button is off let's go ahead and do flaps three we're doing a flaps three toga packs off i'm going to go ahead and turn uh engine volume down a little bit here turn these sounds a little bit there we go turn it down a little bit now Leaps do not have dual cooling, correct. Leaps do not have dual cooling. All right, we got two good starts. Flaps three, what was our trim? Up 0.4. So I'm going to cheat here. And bam, bam, bam. pitch trim up 0.4. We don't set the trim like this in the real airplane. We use the actual numbers down here. So this trim setting would realistically be... Uh, what is that, like 28% CG set, 29% CG set. You can see we look at this arrow and we look at the CG wheel here because I guess there can be some confusion. Back in that day, you used to set it with this, but I use that more of a, of a verification technique now, but this is how you actually set the trim now. You look here at the CG and you can see here when I go to the fuel, or I'm sorry, the perf, well, whatever our perf, uh, or CG was 29.6. There it is. Gross weight 147.9, 29.6. That's pretty darn close. 29.6. Yeah, we're 148,000 pounds, so we're right at max landing weight. All right, so we got a good start on number two. Let's go ahead and taxi out here. Make sure we'll check for traffic. Nobody's behind us. And we're going to taxi to 15. There's nobody here, so let's go brakes released. Mike P gifting 10 
more subs. We're going to do a cinematic taxi out, drive-by view, which I've been missing this. Mike P, welcome to the chat, man. Thank you for 10 more gifted subs. I need to pause that alert box here. Thank you so much, Mike P. Appreciate you. Thank you for the continued support, guys. If you pick up a gifted sub from Mike P, shout him out. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate the support. Don't forget to save before takeoff. Thank you, Eagle One. We're going to taxi out to the runway, and then we're going to do kind of an abbreviated brief for engine out. And then we'll, we'll save it. We'll fly the emergency, and then we will snap back to the runway and fly a normal flight. And then we'll do some maybe some aerodynamic flying. The reflections are just... I like the texture on the wing here. But yeah, the anti-aliasing, that's what one thing. That's an X-plane thing. But as far as the cockpit and the textures, I really do think they look great. I Honestly, I can't really complain about that. Ground friction does feel nice. I will say X-plane, when your airplane's on the ground, man, X-plane is hard to beat. It really is hard to beat X-plane on the ground. I never did mute that alert box. Sorry about that. So I will probably, I'll probably have to disconnect from Batson because I don't want to, this sounds like there's a lot of traffic out of LA. So I don't want to get in their way. So we'll just, we'll disconnect from Batson for this takeoff. I'll just do it right now, actually. Disconnect from Batson so we don't piss anybody off. Sorry to ask, Captain. Don't be sorry, but we, I'm using the Cat 3 Design Tiller. Cat 3 Design. I believe they are making it again. Oh, and I totally forgot to get back to the gentleman that makes it. He sent me an email a while back, and I, I forgot to get back to him. I got to do that. But the link is in the description, or you do exclamation point Tiller, Tiller video. Uh, Cat 3 Design is who designed this Tiller. And it works... Uh, properly in the TOLUS. Let's do a flight control check here. So full up, full down, a neutral. Another thing to note that I've noticed is the flight control deflection in relation to the speed at which it deflects with the side stick feels very realistic. I think, and I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not picking or throwing shade or anything like that, but in Microsoft, you know, when you, when I do this, like maybe with a fly-by wire and I'd have to double check with the Phoenix, it feels like the control surfaces move too quick. These, like you see how I'm, I'm full aft? I'm full aft, but watch, it's still going up. That's very realistic, that little bit of a delay there. So the side stick and the speed at which the flight control surfaces are moving feels much more realistic in this airplane than other airplanes that we've been flying recently. And now for the rudder, watch this. So I actually press my pedal disconnect, boom. So now I'm disconnected from the nose wheel and I can do full left, full right, neutral and I'm still dead bang on the center line release that and if I release that now you see if I move the rudder so I'm moving the rudder now now how we're moving so that's what the pedal disconnect button is for it disconnects the linkage from the pedals to the nose wheel and it lets you do a flight control check there on the ground without s turning down the taxiway unfortunately we can't find a way at least I can't find a way to properly simulate that in Microsoft I'm having issues with it. Safe state before takeoff. Thank you. Good. Thank you. What? Remind me one more time. I'm going to do it right up here at the hold short line. Uh, excuse me, V1. Are there any visual guides inside the cockpit to maintain center line? Yes, right here. Basically, this the inside of this pole is your center line. So, how are we doing? Yeah, we're pretty much bang on. Let me come a little bit more right now. It's probably a little bit different. I'm gonna. I'll. I'll sync it up for you. So I'm going to get externally cheating and then back inside. So the way my view is set up in X-Plane, it actually seems to be right about here. In the real aircraft where I sit, generally, as a captain, we use this as your centerline guide. And it's not necessarily bang on the middle here. It's kind of like this inner side right here in real life is what we use for, for centerline control. Or you could think of it as, uh, you know, step on the centerline, your right foot, because it kind of lines up with your right foot, your right thigh. That's when you know you're on the center line. 
Does Phoenix have that delay? Uh, Flappy Boy, you know what? I, it's been a while since we flew with Phoenix. I'm going to have to check it. I'm noticing things now, you know, when we get back in X-Plane. It's been months since I've been in X-Plane. So what we'll have to do is fly a stream in Microsoft soon, maybe even later today. I got nothing going on today. We Maybe we'll double it up. Maybe we'll do like a, just a banger stream today. Who knows? Uh, we'll do one this afternoon. And I'd like to test, I'd like to test that from my own knowledge because I can't recall... You know, I can't, but I, when I did the flight control check, I just noticed that it, the delay was much more realistic. And what really triggers that is in real life, when I do the flight control check, especially, you know, like, well, I'll, let's go ahead and stop here real quick. I'm going to stop, I'm going to save state, and then we'll finish this conversation. So I'm going to go situation, and I'm going to save situation, Burbank TO, save situation, done. The Burr TO has been saved, so we'll come back here. Uh, in real life, when we do the flight control check, I say flight controls, and then I pull my stick aft, and I'm waiting for the first officer to say full up. And there's, it's not instantly. There's a delay. Like, I'll be aft, full up, full down, neutral, full left, full right. And you, and you can kind of see, like, with my hand, I'm already full, but the airlines aren't deflected full yet. Same with the rudder. I'm full. I'm full right. And just, it, just that little bit of lag, this really, really represents that well. Um, it's not as quick, especially in the elevator, especially in the elevator. So I just, one thing I'd wanted to point out. All right, uh, auto brakes max, takeoff config is checked. Radar PWS, it's on auto. These are typically in auto normally, so I'm just going to put those in auto. Uh, TARA, we're not on VATSIM, that's fine. That's in above mode. Uh, rearm them and cabin call is done so before we blast off real quick let's do a quick takeoff briefing because this is how we're going to do a simulated engine out on this one so uh emergencies after v1 we're going to continue as an in-flight emergency our single engine procedure is a heading of 160 and typically burbank they'll say uh you know climb on heading 160 or you know, RNAV, depending if you're RNAV off the ground or whatnot. Um, depends on the departure, really. But uh, 160 is our engine out heading. We're going to fly 160 until reaching acceleration altitude of 1770, call it 1800 feet. At that point, we will then uh, push to level off, accelerate, we'll speed up, we'll clean up. And then I'm going to be doing this single pilot not technically by the book i'm going to just run through the ecam to keep the airplane flying because i'm really doing this to see the validity if that's a word of landing on two four right out of burbank i know in theory it is i've never done it in the sim and i want to test it because this is how we set it up in real life out of burbank so don't grade me on the handling of the emergency procedure, please. I'm just going to try to keep the airplane flying. I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to do my best single pilot and get us on the ILS to 24 right. So that said, you guys have been briefed. I've been briefed. I'm going to go APU bleed on because we're doing a PAXOFT TOGA static flap 3 takeoff. I'm going to need maximum yogas in chat. So park brake is off. Let's line it up and get out of here. Carta, I saved it. I saved it just there at the hold short line. Thank you, man. Safe state has been completed. Man, I do miss the flyby cam and X-Plane. Got my lights. 250-hour move right there. Oh, they uh, Tolis also has modeled the new landing lights, I think, which are the fairing lights, which I personally hate. That's an Airbus. Not, not, I don't hate Tolis for it, but... I like the old school extendable lights. All right, so here in Burbank, real real technique here. You want to use as much runway as possible. You don't just want to follow that lead on line. I could use a little bit more, but well, then we'll spin it around. Wee! That's where if anybody's standing up, they're going to get fall over. All right, that wasn't very good. That'd probably be a debrief there. <laughs> Look how much runway I left behind me. So probably another plane length I could have uh, could have set up on. All right, we got yogas in chat. We only have 186 likes. So here's the deal. I need 200 and 
75 likes, we'll do Toga Flaps Three Packs Off from outside view. If we don't hit 275 likes in the next 30 seconds, we're just going to do it from the inside view, which is pretty lame and boring. So help me out. Help out the channel. Smash down that like button or just click it nicely. You don't have to smash it. Just click that like button one time. If you click it twice, you don't like it. So just click it once. 275, you guys are absolutely awesome. Chrono's off. We're going to do Toga Flaps 3 Static from exterior view. I'm excited. Let's do this. What I will do is I will st I'll spool it up 50 from here because it's pretty sweet. So, spool them up 50, nose forward on the stick. Ooh, just that. All right. Here we go, holding the brakes, 50%. Yoga. Maybe a little bit more growl on that one. Still pretty good. Mantoga, brake max. Let's get back on center line. Oh my gosh. 80 knots reset, 100 knots, check. V1. Rotate. Positive rate. Gear up. Engine 2 fire. I'm going to pop this out so you guys can see it. We're going to fly the airplane. All right. 400 feet, engine two fire, thrust lever two, idle. Lower that nose. There's 1700. We're going to go ahead and push the level off. Speed, 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 speed. Where are we in? Speed, speed. I need power on that one. Don't there we go. Sink. Speed. Come on, baby. Don't Get sink. in one back in there. Don't sink. Don't sink. Uh oh, that's Don't not sink. good. Don't sink. Kind of botched that one, didn't we? Don't sink. Don't sink. Don't sink. There we go. Don't sink. Let's go ahead and continue to fly heading 160. Don't sink. We're going to select heading. Don't sink. Don't sink. Don't sink. Oh, cool. We're going into. Uh, I got to get up to 1,700 feet, too, so I'm going to kind of trickle the climb. All right, we'll stop ECAM. Flaps one. That's going to help our climb performance. I can't get that beta target to come back. Let me go. I'm trying to trim that rudder out. Look at that acceleration. Let's get back up to 1,700 feet. All right, engine two master. Hold on. I want to see what this looks like. Oh, man. Yeah, we're burning. We are burning. All right, let's stop playing. There's 1,700 feet. Back to our level off. All right, continue ECAM. Engine 2 master off. Engine 2 master, confirm. Confirm. Engine fire push button 2, push. Engine fire push button 2, confirm. Confirm. Push. Discharge after 8 seconds. At this time, uh, departure, uh, spear wings 357. We've got an engine fire request of emergency uh, returning to Los Angeles, requesting 2-4 right ILS. All right, uh, Spear Wings 357, Roger, fly your present heading. Present heading for Spear Wings 357. Okay, here comes S speed. We'll go flaps zero. Stop ECAM, flap zero. Continue ECAM. Agent one, discharge. Agent one, discharge. Confirm. Discharge. All right, three to five prior to green dot. Let's go ahead and pull for open climb. And I'm going to come to, uh, let's do 3,000. And we can rearm the auto thrust, and we can go MCT, which we are. Through a thrust MCT, we can also help ourselves out with the autopilot. I know we're really botching this up here. Bear with me. I also need to uh, activate the secondary. So we'll go secondary, activate secondary, perf, uh, perf, activate approach phase, confirm. That's going to mess with our speed. That's okay. I'll reselect speed uh, manually, 3 to 5 prior to green up, about 210 knots, leveling off at 3,000. Look, there is our runway. So we're actually, we're right on downwind. Uh, okay, engine start selector ignition. All right, engine 2 shutdown. If no fuel leak, we don't have one. We're going to skip that in balance monitor. TCAS boat select TA, so we don't have any uh, RAs with one engine. In balance monitor, cross bleed shut. Cross bleed is shut. All right, engine 2 shutdown. Clear engine 2, clear engine 2. Status, stop status. Do an after takeoff checklist. 
All right, uh, landing gear is up, flaps up. Uh, it bleeds and packs are set. Okay, there we go. We got a caution. Air crash bleed fault. That's normal. Clear air. Clear air. All right, we need to get on the slope here. So we're going to LS push buttons on. And uh, Spirit Wings 357, descend and maintain 2,000 feet, slow to 180 knots, vectors for the ILS 24 right. All right, VFE next, minus 10, flaps one. Flaps one. Spirit Wings 357, fly heading uh, 180, vectors ILS, you're clear to approach 24 right. So here we go. Out, glide slope blue, low blue, cat three, single, autopilot one plus two. We need to slow down. We're also looking visually for the runway here. All right. Uh, we go through the systems pages. We'll clear all that. We'll clear all that. So now we are single engine, and we're going to be we're way high over two four right. So, wow, that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and we're way high on that, uh, right? There's no way. Yeah, we're well above the glide slope. So we'll vector through the glide slope. Come left, heading 160, uh, 170. We're going to come left to 160, where flaps, speed checks flaps 2. This airplane lives at flaps 280 knots. We're going to come back around for the ILS. So, and we could probably do it visually. That would actually be more fun. We're open descent down to 2,000 feet, 180 knots. So, wow, that is... That is actually pretty fascinating. I did not realize, that's why we're doing that, I did not realize how close LA was. 2,000 feet, you can't make it. You gotta be looking for that runway immediately, or you need a vector out to the, uh, to the east. That's pretty incredible. I, I'm really glad we did this because I did not realize how close that actually was. I mean, there's LA right there. Now, if we put our constraints mode, we should have had those on. We could see Kobe is uh, at or below 2,200 feet. So I tell you what, let's see how it flies uh, single engine ILS. We'll fly heading 070, vector downwind, ILS 24 right. All right, we'll do auto brakes uh, medium. You can see, there we go. There's our normal glide slope coming back in. Uh, what we should do is let's shoot a line off MERSE. Uh, what is our inbound course is 252. I should have put that in the other. There we go. 25. No, let's clear that. We've already got it extended. We're fine. I was going to extend the line, but we don't need to do that. We've already got it there. 180 knots, flaps two. We're single engine. We're actually trimmed down. I got about 10 uh, units of rudder trim in there. We're looking good now. Listen to that PTU running. Can you do an auto land with one engine? Yes, you can, believe it or not. Uh, an auto land with one engine. Mm. An auto land with one engine. I'm uh, Yes, I think you can. <laughs> right, Gustavo? You can do a Cat 3 single engine. Can you auto land, though? I'm honestly drawing a blank, man. I think you can. I don't see why not. All right. There we go. Now we're out past the glide slope. Let's slow to 170 and let's turn it to uh, Spearwings 357. Turn left to. Turn left 290. Cleared ILS 24 right. All right. 290, 24 right ILS. Cleared approach. Cat 3 single, that's what it is, yeah. Should have Cat 3 single. Once we come around here, I'm actually going to change that vector. It's a little bit too steep. 330 actually was better. 330 approach. There we go. Cat 3 single, autopilot 1 plus 2. Glide slow blue, lope blue. We're going to hand fly it uh, once we're inbound a little bit more, but I want to see it capture with one engine. We are flying around single engine. It's doing a good job. Notify the flight attendants. We've done all that good stuff. We're looking good. Simmy Peter, good to see you, man. 
It's been a little hectic. Sorry, man. What do you think of it? Oh, Sim, honestly, I, I'm getting used to it. I like it. I really do like it. I think it's a, it's a great airplane. I think it's probably one of the best. I think it's probably the best Tolis release that they've done as far as texturing and all the features that are implemented in it right out of the gate. Really, I really do think it's a good airplane. We're going to we're doing some more tests here on the other portion of the flight, but this is all accurate. There's our low star. So it's capturing. Let's come down here to our perf. Uh, EO, we don't want to clear the EO yet. That's our engine out, so we're single engine. We're landing config full. VAP is 138 knots. Now, a little bit of an overshoot there on the loke. That was also a really steep intercept on my part. No more than idle reverse. Yep, correct. When you only have one engine operating, you, really, you just want to go idle reverse. So let's see if it recaptures here. I'm not doing any intervening. I'm just going to let the airplane. I'm, I'm testing the autopilot here on this airplane. We see our brake medium. That's all properly simulated. Glide slope still waiting to capture. We do have the low capture. There is our glide slope star. Beautiful. Go around altitude. We'll set 3,000 white. That's also correct for the NEO. 3,000 white. I feel like my view got messed up. We can see 2-4 right in there. Let's go ahead and begin configuring. So we'll go ahead and manage the speed. We are on the descent. We'll go gear down. Arm the speed brakes. Lea Phoenix minus 10. Flaps full. Yeah, look at that. It's pricking right on it. It's doing a good job of correcting with a five knot crosswind as well. So we are cat three single. Whoever asked about that, I was drawing a blank. Sorry. Yes, you can still, barring there's no other abnormalities with your airplane, theoretically, yes, it can land single engine auto land, but you are, you're, you're restricted to a cat three single approach. That has other stipulations to it. All right, here comes the thrust. Let's see how the uh, facts are going to coordinate that. See the yaw moment there? It's trying. I'm going to pull up the flight control cam over here. That's pretty cool. You can see, look at that. That's where the trim mark is. Wow, that's pretty neat. Okay, let's go autopilot off. I'm going to hand fly now. I'm going to leave the uh, auto thrust on. And we're going to hand fly this ILS. So let me go ahead and pop this out so you guys can see it a little bit better. Pretty, I mean, very stable. Now, let's see. I, I really want to see the yaw. If we get that yaw moment down here on uh, when we go to idle, because we have all that trim in there. Some guys teach, you know, reset the trim at the 50 foot mark or in the flare. I don't do any of that. You just fly the airplane. Use the rudder pedals like you were taught. Land is green. We wouldn't say that. I'm just seeing, make, seeing everything go through here. We're cat one now because the autopilot's been disconnected. Minimum. Landing. Spoilers, little wonky uh, center line control there. That's just me being a bad pilot. Manual brakes. Not bad. I'm a little off center line, I know. You could use reverse aircraft stop. Go ahead and set the brake. Flight attendant stations. Not bad. Not bad. Let's go ahead and do a replay of that. Let's do a replay of that. I'm gonna go ahead and let's just go, do I have replay cam? I think I have a replay cam here. There it is. Let's watch that replay. We'll analyze that. Let's back it up. Oh, nope, nope, nope. We don't need, they don't need any music. We're not done. We got a long way to go. 
XPs, what's up, man? Good to see you. So, oh, XP. Speaking of, since you're here, XP72 had probably the best landing I've ever seen in the 320 on his stream on, what was that, yesterday? Two days ago? I can't remember which stream you were flying on this uh, 320 Neo, but man, that was the best landing i've ever seen in the 320 man that was fantastic dude he absolutely i mean that was like a zero it was a zero 100 zero all right so i want to turn this down what i'm looking for here hold on pause that i need to, where's my sim sounds there we go i'm gonna turn the x-plane way down i'm um, what i'm looking for here is kind of the yawing effects of the airplane so right now we've got a lot of power or only power from engine one right so we're countering that with left rudder you can see the deflection here now the problem and i don't say problem but the issue is when you bring this power to idle what's going to happen is you're now going to reduce that yaw moment and the airplane is going to want to roll back uh to the left now because of the way we were kind of trimmed out we were kind of crabbed a little bit into the good engine here so it kind of works to cancel itself out if you can kind of balance this fine line. As you land, as you flare, I'm adding right rudder to get nice and straight. And then as I'm bringing the power back, the aerodynamics is going to bring the airplane back to the left because I'm reducing the amount of thrust on this engine, therefore reducing the amount of yaw on this engine needed to fly straight. So I'm going to do that. And let's also bring up the, uh, I like the output thingy. Where is that? Uh show a particle no hold on hold on hold on let me go here real quick i know there's a command for it where do you show like the lift lift somebody i, I know one of you explainers have the wing lift is that it what's is it wing lift oh no that's the raw output how do you do the um one of you guys i know you know it i know you know it show 3d flight model wasn't control m let's see can we can we see it in maybe we can't see it in replay cycle through with control m all right i guess you can't see it in, oh there we go ah i can't show it anymore all right, let me go, let's watch this. So bring it back. Look at the rudder, look at the rudder. So I'm going to be inputting some rudder. There we go, to straighten it out at the same time, bringing the power back. And look, look at that yaw. Now that's a little aggressive, but I mean, I don't know if that's just aggressive or me not being ready for it, but watch this. So I'm straightening it out, power comes back. And because the power's coming back, the thrust is reducing, and it's yawing the airplane back to the left. And then we actually got a nice little chunker landing here. And because we were so off, uh, we were so uh, side-loaded, then we had a little bit of a wiggle-woggle to touch down. Idle reverse on the number one engine only. Not all of it works in replay. I got you. Thank you. But, I mean, still, you could see what we're getting at here as far as flight dynamics-wise. So I think... While it was a poor landing, it was a good, it was a good uh, showcasing of how the flight dynamics are really pretty well done. Now, I'd have to do it again and actually anticipate it better to see if it's too aggressive. But, no, it's definitely there. That yaw is definitely there when you bring that rudder back. Now, that's why some techniques will be if you reset the rudder trim in the flare, what's going to happen is this: all this trim is going to be reset, right? So what happens? The nose is going to come right as you bring the power to idle, and it's going to counter the adverse yaw. So you can see there, that's my manual input. And then bringing the power back, boom, it brings the airplane to the left. So that's exactly what I wanted to see. Really cool. It handled pretty well. I'd have to probably try it again to see if I could not suck as much or see maybe if it needs some tuning. But either way, really neat to see actual true flight dynamics in play on that approach. More right rudder, more right rudder. Man, if I had a dollar for every time I said more right rudder, I'd probably have a couple hundred thousand dollars on that, man. But um, that was pretty sweet. You guys want to see the fire on takeoff? Let me see if I can. This might crash the sim. But we have Tolis autosave, right? So, what the heck? Let's just see. 
Let's just see. Because we have autosave, we're going to risk it. I'm going to let it load in here for a second. You can see there's no airport loaded yet. We'll fast forward. Let the sim load. When would you hit the rudder reset? Swarm. Now, that, it's a technique that is taught differently. You know, where I've been taught the Airbus, you don't reset the rudder. You anticipate it with the rudder pedals, and you fly it with rudder pedals. But I've heard guys resetting it in the flare, resetting it, you know, a 30 feet or so, just because you are, what you're trying to accomplish is countering the yaw when you bring the good engine back to idle. So in the real, I should say in the real airplane, in the real sim, it has been my experience that that yawing moment when you bring the operating engine to idle, it is not so dramatic to the point where I feel like I need to reset the rudder trim. I personally use my feet on the rudder pedals and kind of get her down myself. Now, there are guys that do the rudder trim reset. Again, it's not right or wrong, just a technique. In my own personal experience and how I've been trained, I find it to be a little... I don't like the airplane moving the flight control surfaces when I don't, especially single engine, when I don't want them to. Like, what happens if you have to go around and you just reset the trim? Now you're going to have a wonky, wonky uh, rudder. You're going to have to do all your trimming again. So that's a negative to doing the rudder trim reset. If you have to do a go around and in your type ride, you have to do a single engine go around. Actually, I have to do a couple of them. So, you know, that's another factor why I would I prefer not to reset the rudder trim. But... Not right or wrong, just a technique. All right, let's see if we can watch this takeoff here. Yes, I will do the. We're gonna do a. Uh, we're gonna do the actual flight to Phoenix here momentarily. So we're just getting, we're just getting her started. Uh, let me zoom it up here. This is where you guys were smashing that like button, which I really appreciate. Tom says in the DA forty two, I don't like landing with rudder trim. When I turn final, I throw the rudder trim uh, back to neutral and just play with the rudder pedal. There you go. Yeah, I like I like feeling my ro my rudder moving. All right, so here's the takeoff. Let's just say we were a passenger. Where do you normally sit? Right here. This is kind of the the oh shoot view right here. This is where you'd be sitting. You watching the takeoff. This is one thing you don't want to see after rotation, especially at a Burbank. Now we had a miscombobulation of my part when I brought number two to idle. It actually disconnected the auto thrust and it brought number one to idle as well. That's right there. You don't want to see that. Fly the airplane. Positive rate. Gear up. You're on fire. Let the sucker burn. Fly the airplane. Fly the airplane. Because the fire may or may not kill you, but if you stop flying the airplane at 200 feet, you will probably kill yourself and everybody on board. So fly the airplane. Now, because it was still producing thrust, this is kind of an interesting thing as well. We always practice these, uh, we always practice the engine failures, you know, right at V1. What was interesting is we were still producing thrust there for a little bit, so my climb rate was very aggressive. Let's actually, let's replay this here. Let's replay this cockpit view, because this is a good teaching and learning moment, especially, if, you know, for me. So we were still producing a good amount of thrust, so let's go positive rate. And remember, we are PAX off toga now. This was operating. That's the fire alarm. But look at our climb rate. We were still producing thrust. And look, we're pitching way up there. We're way past our single engine, you know, V1 cut, you know, 12 and a half degrees, 13 degrees max pitch, right? Because we had thrust through the rotation. So when I brought the second engine back... Let's see, so we're flying out, we're flying the airplane, gear is in the well. So look, I brought the engine back, and what happened here, I don't know why this happened. This, I don't know if this is an X-plane thing, or maybe I did something wrong. Number one came back to idle. I don't know why that is. I, I, must, have, I must have hit something or messed something up. But that's why, look, that's one thing you do not want to do. We just went from toga packs off to no engine power. This is the no engine option on the 320. This is not good. Look at our look at our speed trend. Look at that. We're at acceleration altitude. I should be pushed to level off here in MCT thrust or toga thrust, really, if you need it. But we are leveling off. There's our speed call. That's accurate, true to real life. Love to hear that modeled speed, speed. So now it's like, okay, you got yourself in a bad situation. Now we need to, okay, I know acceleration is 1,700 feet. 
Now, in a real two crew environment, hopefully this would never happen. You'd realize, hey, why is number one at idle? Got to bring number one online. It took me a minute to get that situated. But you just put yourself in a poop sandwich. You need to get yourself out of it. So the only way, look how close the buildings are. Look at your vertical speed. The only way you're going to get out of this is to actually lower the angle of attack and recover the flight path here. So this is what we do. That's a, that's a problem. Here we go. We got N1 coming back online as soon as we got our power back to MCT. Look at the yaw. There's that power coming in, countering with left rudder. Now, because we were so slow, this is a very dangerous, this is a very dangerous spot to be in right here. And we almost put this sucker in the dirt. We are so slow. And I'm trying to correct with aileron or not a little bit of aileron. I need to be using more rudder here instead of aileron because when you add aileron, what deflects on the wing here? Look at these bad boys. What are these things doing? They are just killing lift. Do you really want to be killing lift at VLS 140 knots, 760 feet above the ground while on fire? No, you do not want to be killing lift when you're 760 feet above the ground, 140 knots on fire above Burbank of all places too. I mean, above any ground or water, but let alone this congested area. So my debrief will be less aileron, more rudder here because you got to get the airplane. you got to get more lift on your wings. So we got the, uh, we got her back under control here. More rudder, more rudder. Look, I'm basically full rudder there. Maybe some tuning in play, but the, there we go. Our roll spoilers are down. We're back in it. We have control of the airplane now. I'm three or 400 feet below. I'm 400 feet below the traditional acceleration altitude. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and start climbing back up. There's my F speed. I know because we're doing a flaps uh, three toga, I got to get those flaps up if I can because that's really going to help the climb performance. And look, right now the flaps are in tr transition from three to one. Now look at, look at that. Our, our speed trend is going up. Flaps in position one. Now our speed is coming up nicely. Now I can go ahead and start milking that for some climb rate. We were pretty, we were super heavy. We're 148,000 pounds, so we weren't light. Um, but there we go. Now we got our speed climb. We're climbing up. We're not following the flight director, but this is an emergency situation. You gotta do what you gotta do. I gotta get to my acceleration altitude. I know that's gonna be a safe altitude. Here comes 1,700 feet. We're gonna level off. And at the same time, we're, we're still burning. Now in real life, hopefully, the non-flying pilot is going to be working through and you would no longer be burning at this point. But these engines, I hate saying this because you would never really want it to be this way, but theoretically this pylon is designed to burn and fall off. However, you have a bunch of fuel right here in the wing tank. You're shooting fire out the back. You don't want to be burning if you can help it. But what's going to kill you faster, the ground or an engine fire? The ground will definitely kill you faster. So fly the airplane. Always, always fly the airplane. Here we go. Now we're back to normal. I'm single piloting this. We're 1,700, 1,800 feet. Here comes S speed. We're going to continue to clean up the airplane and take it into LA. And then we'll take care of the fire situation. Look, the fire's out. I blew the bottle. We're no longer burning. Now let's just get the airplane on the ground. So that was a really neat. Uh, that was actually really neat. I really enjoyed that. I mean, it was pretty poorly flown from a procedure standpoint. There were basically no procedures, but a single pilot doing it here first time. I mean, it's kind of neat to see how it all went down. And you could see my mistakes. You could see the roll there trying to – that is one spot that's scary. I mean, that is a very scary spot to be on right at VLS, high AOA, roll spoilers out. I mean, that is how you put – transport uh, not even a transport that's how you put any airplane into the ground right there i mean that was let's just go back to because it was so bad so dangerous when you see this on your pfd this is a, what you do not want to see so here we go i'm gonna rewind a little bit further so here we go for some reason number Don't one sink. came back it shouldn't have come back Don't sink. right here when you Don't see this sink. look out the window look at that yaw look at that yaw stop stop with the aileron get more rudder in there now i'm I can see I'm full left rudder, so maybe there could be some tweaking on the effectiveness of rudder. Maybe not. Maybe it's me, but either way, get that rudder in there. Get the AOA down, lower the nose, and recover that flight path because you do not want to be sitting right there at VLS with freaking one engine running. It's just not a good spot. There we go. Recover the flight path. 
You've got time. You're looking out the window. IMC is really, that's where you can see IMC could be super dangerous, but we got her done. We saved it. We're good. Uh, using aileron is such a hard-coded natural response in situations where rudder is better. Slam, absolutely, man. You're absolutely correct. Man, look at that nice model, the flight of the <laughs> flight factor of the Tolis, man. That is a really nice external model. Okay, this was fun. Let's go ahead and do this. What we're going to do is we're going to go, uh, we're going to end replay mode. So let's do this. We're going to go flight. We're going to, this might do its thing. I'm going to go control M. I'm going to turn everything off. How do I turn it off? There we go. Turn it off. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to reconfigure the cockpit, put engine two master on. That's normal. We were flaps three and everything else looks good. Let's go back up top, push that in. I don't know if that makes a difference. And then let's go Burbank takeoff load. Let's see what happens here. Let's go here. Let's go to fault scenarios. We're going to delete that. I'm just going to apply that. Everything looks good. We do have random faults on. But look at that. Tolis for the win. And we are right back to normal with a ready to go 320 on a flight to Phoenix. So let's bring it all back. This is why I think X Plane is going to be valid for quite some time. X Plane to me is very much a tool. You can use this sim as a very efficient tool for training you know we just went through a whole engine out fire scenario and we're right back to runway for a normal takeoff so now we can kind of calm down i can get back to hanging out with you guys in chat let's do a normal takeoff let's reconnect to that sim we're on we'll get everything back on i'm going to let the airplane spawn in we'll get make sure everything is good to go alert box is coming back on I hope I didn't miss anything there on the uh, alerts, but I think everything else looks good. Let's do an auto brakes max. Takeoff config is checked. Spoilers armed. Spoilers are not armed. Spoilers will not arm. That's fine. And takeoff config done. All right, let's go. Lights are coming on. Do some normal esque flying. We'll still do a packs off takeoff with the APU bleed on. Tyler Smith, V1 back in x -Plane. Hey, man, I'm back in x -Plane for, I, I said that something had to bring me back in x -Plane. A 320 Neo from Tolis will bring me back in x -Plane, no doubt about it. Let's make sure nobody's on final there, nobody's landing over there. And here we go, Burbank traffic, uh, Spear Wings 357, departing Burbank, runway 15, Burbank. All right, here we go, brakes off. Lights are set, let's go. Uh, so now we do a normal takeoff on the departure up to 10,000 feet. Let's see if I can do a little bit better of a lineup this time. Uh, do not have to reset. I don't think I, I've, I've turned the failure off and I saved the state before we had any failures. So that is why, uh, that's why we did the save state there before any failures were active. I'm hoping we don't get another fi an engine fire. Let's hope we don't get another one. Let's see if I can make this turn here without. I'm. S uh, oh yes, I can look around. So much nicer to look, or click and drag without locking up the flight controls. I do love that. Uh, we're off center line on that one, but we saved some runway. But we were definitely off center line there. All right, that's all good. Let's go spool them up. Fifty, proper takeoff. Let's go. There we go. I don't know why we're so far to the not center line. Mantoga SRS. Auto thrust blue. 80 knots thrust set, 100 knots check. V1, rotate. Positive rate and gear up. 
Navin. Flyby. Man, I've missed that flyby view. Oh, let's do it again. Can't ever get enough of flybys. Now look at that, we're well below the pitch too. We should be climbing out higher. That's the performance we got. Let's do it, one more, one more. Woo. I love the Airbus. All right, there's acceleration altitude, lower the nose. There's our positive trend, right into thrust climb, climb, auto thrust. Flaps when? And there's not much to look at on this here. So they, what we'll do is we'll go autopilot one because I want to, oh, TCAS standby, my bad. T-A-R-A, that should be in above mode. And let's go direct to slap. Sometimes they give you rave, sometimes they give you slap if you're lucky. Thrust climb, climb nav. What's our outside air temp is plus 13, so we're looking good. PBR, really nicely done. I do like the PBR. The external looks really good. I think it's the best external that we had from Tolus, no doubt. I love having proper prats out there, man. I love having proper. There's S speed. Oh, look, we forgot to retract the flaps automatically, but look, there they go. We forgot to retract them, so now they went auto, which is just how it works in real life. And I wouldn't expect anything different from Tolus because they do have really nicely done system simulation. Nice steep turn there. You're more of a Corona man than a PBR. Yeah, I can't do that PBR stuff, man. As far as simming is concerned. All right, we're supposed to go to 39. You may think that's a little bit crazy for this flight, but for a Neo, it's really not. Uh, optimum, though, is 36. Max, 390. Let's, hell, let's let it go all the way to 39. Why not? Why not? We'll go full screen cam. Does that ever happen in real life with the flaps auto sequence? Because you and the FO were busy. Hopefully not because you were busy. But let's talk about auto flap retraction. I think uh, I've briefed it. I've talked about it. But let me talk. Let me tell you why auto flap is in place. And there's actually a bad technique for auto flap retraction. So the auto flap retraction was initially designed for a heavy 321 or really a heavy airplane, every Airbus, uh, where your S speed is actually above your VFE. So your clean speed is actually above where your, your uh, max, or your, your, yeah, your flap limit. There's 10,000 feet. We'll go ahead and get the lights off. Oh, we forgot to do this as well. So Airbus put in that auto flap retraction where if you reach, what is it, like 207, 208 knots, it will auto retract the flaps, but it will leave the slats out. Now, while you're, when you're heavy, this is all fine and dandy because it has, you know, it's anticipating the acceleration rate of a heavy airplane. Where you can get in trouble with auto flap retraction is if you're just trying to do it to be cool, is if you're in a light airplane, if you're in a light 320, a light, a light 321 even, if you let it auto retract, you may still overspeed the slats because the acceleration rate of a lighter airplane is not anticipated as it was a heavier plane when they when they designed the auto flap retraction and the buffer and the margin and all that. So there actually was a memo not too long ago that said if you're you know don't get in the habit of just doing auto flap retraction on a light airplane. That's not what it's there for. You can still overspeed, and there have been instances of people overspeeding the slats because they're trying to just be cool and let the auto retraction do the thing. 
you really need to be nice and heavy because the acceleration of a heavy 321 especially is much more docile and it's going to take a lot more to go from that 207 whatever it is 208 knots to the to the actual slat limit so that's a little bit more in depth on the auto retraction that's what it's there for try to still do it manually like you're, when you're above your s speed flap zero after takeoff checklist that's the call that's normal letting it do auto is not a normal thing unless you're heavy no howdy on the winglets oh i know yeah there's no, that's what we're missing on the winglets i forgot about that shift one is quite cinematic what's shift one? Oh wow it's like a slow flyby Interesting. Let's do shift, shift two. Here we go in the turn. Uh, I still like shift two better. I like the flyby sound. Why have you uh, not installed any orthos on that? Because it's not even, not even like Orbix is not even properly set for 12, right? Like it's just, you can do it, but you have like auto gen mess and all that stuff. I, I'm not about that. Like, X-Plane 12 to me, here comes 18,000 feet set standard. X-Plane 12 to me is a tool where I want to use this sim for training purposes, for running e-cams, for watching the flight dynamics of the airplane in real time. Let me do it right now. Let's go control M. Uh, wind data, element forces. What's that? Let's go outside real quick. Uh, what else we got here? AOA. Oh, this would have been cool to have up when we were doing that, when we were super high and fat, or super slow, and in that steep turn there. That's your AOA. That's pretty neat. Uh, wind, knots, streamlines, the wake turbulence. There you go. You can see our wake. That's pretty cool. And microburst. I thought there was a way to see the lift. I swear we did the lift vector before. I think it's this. I think it's element forces. Yeah, you can see you can see the uh, basically their lift vectors, right? So I mean, you can see the nice lift vector with the wing. You can see where the most amount of lift is being produced. Oh, we have a turn coming up here. We do. So let's watch the turn here. Uh, we're 19 on the uh, restriction. We're climbing via the SID. That's fine. We're about to turn, so we're going to watch. I want you guys to pay attention to the aileron portion of the wings here in the turn. So let's take a look at this. So here we're going to start to roll. Oh, no, not yet. Should roll into the turn here. So look, we're creating more lift on this aileron. Look at that, that's pretty cool. And we're actually creating negative lift on this wing to bring that wing down. That's pretty neat. There's our AOAs, element forces plus AOA. Now we're gonna bring this lift up. Look at that, 20 to 18%. You can see it's very small, but it, you know, you don't need a whole lot. Whoa. Pretty neat. So, all right, well, we're still at 19. I tell you what, let's just do an open climb, 390, send it. Thrust climb, open climb, up we go. Small movements, that's power your moment arm mass. There you go. Yeah, so the longer the arm, the smaller the movement you need, right? Explain 12 a tool versus Microsoft a game. I, I wouldn't quite say Microsoft is a game. It can be gamey depending on what add-ons you have. No doubt about it. But I still consider Microsoft very much a sim.
while since I've watched a stream. Bank angle check. I've started my private pilot training and I have 10 hours in the DA-20. Boy, it is quite a floater. Have you ever been to KCMH with your current company? Have a great day. Papa Tango, thank you for the $5 bank angle check, man. Um, the, uh, what would you ask there? Oh, you started your private pilot. That's awesome, man. 10 hours, 10 hour mark. That's awesome, man. Congratulations on that. It is a floater. Hey, most light GA airplanes are that way, but that's exciting. I have been to Columbus many times. I've been there. Actually, Columbus was where I encountered severe turbulence uh, one time in an Embraer. So uh, thank you so much for your support. Papa Tango, congratulations on your 10 hours of flight training. That is very exciting. Hope you continue to pursue the dream, my friend. Pursue that dream. That's awesome. More accurately, the longer moment arm, the greater the force applied. Therefore, the movement, more movement on the wing. There you go. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, indeed. Moment arm maths. All right, up to 39. Typical Neo doing Neo things. Where are we at 250 knots? We're going to have to juice that up a little bit. What's our perf data? Actually, let's, let's do properly here. Let's go Phoenix. We'll put that in there. Perf uh, 12. Now nah, let's do 75. That should increase our speed. There we go. 291.77 in the climb. In cruise, we're 79 Mach. That looks better. There we go. So now we've got an acceleration. We've changed the, the cost index. So now we've got our speed coming up. Let's see how it handles this cost index change. It should lower that vertical speed pretty good there. Look at that vertical speed coming down. Pac-Man 056, thank you for the super chat. $10, man. Appreciate that. Very kind of you. Great to see you back on the bus, or in the bus on stream. Always love the insight. Cheers to you and the fam. Pac-Man, appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for that. Yes, I've, it's always good to be back in the Airbus, man. I love this airplane so much. Thank you for the $10 super chat. Glad you're enjoying the content. Hope you stay with us all the way into Phoenix Sky Harbor, America's friendliest airport, or something like that, right? Damn, bro, this makes me want to get back into X-Plane. Aviation Blaze. So... My thing is, I don't know, and I might have missed it in the chat, but now that we're kind of leveling off here in, in our cruise portion, climb cruise portion of flight, maybe you guys can, I can pay more attention. But the last I checked, as far as scenery, like full-blown compatibility with 12, like Orbix, I really haven't seen anything. Am I, did I just miss something? Like, I have all the Orbix HD stuff from X-Plane 11. Does that, is that been updated for 12 like does it fully take advantage of 12 or is that still not a thing because i've said it before man give me some third party scenery some orthos i'll do it but i'm not going to waste my time anymore and 12 going and doing my own orthos it's just not something that i'm uh, gonna do because i'm gonna use this sim like i said as a tool but i've seen guys i've seen sims i mean sim aviator sim looks freaking great i mean he's got all the orthos in the world he's got all the sceneries x-plane 12 does his own orthos i mean he's got it looking good you can definitely make the sim as far as ground textures and the lighting look pretty decent but i mean we still got you still have limitations in the sim when i when i look at immersive environments to fly in like when i want to fly when i want to recreate a real world flight that i've done you can't beat Microsoft because the environment is so immersive. Everything about that sim is immersive. X-Plane 12, honestly, no lie, guys, to me is what P3D used to be to X-Plane 11. So for those that haven't been around in the sim world for a long time, you know, you had FSX and P3D and then X-Plane. X-Plane was kind of there in between. You had X-Plane 9, 10. But X-Plane 11 really, I think, was the star of the show when it came to sims and a lot of the fsx people transitioned to p3d p3d at least in my opinion is looked at as a simulator where you're going to pay a lot of money to to play i mean it is p3d is a very expensive situation but what you're getting uh you're getting some tools and some interactions whether it be between like we're showing here the different element forces and the, you know full-blown replay and being able to integrate a bunch of other things into the sim that make it very uh, professional i guess is the word i'm trying to use to make it educational i mean p3d to me i don't even consider it as like a as like a fun sim it's a study sim but with 
with the introduction of Microsoft, I think Microsoft has taken over like the fun, the immersive environment. And with the add-ons coming out, we're getting some really high quality add-ons. But X-Plane 12, I mean, you've got higher dollar add-ons. It's a more of a niche platform. But the reason that it's niche, I think, is for the reasons that we just demonstrated on that takeoff. If I want to come in here and I want to say, hey, in real life, we're always putting in LA 24 right in our secondary for departure. I want to know how is that going to work out in the real airplane? Or in Callie Simmers, thank you. Callie Simmer, thank you so much for the $10. Bang Gangle check right back at you, man. Man, animal fries, double double. That's you're you're speaking my language, Callie Simmer. You're speaking my language, man. Have a good rest of your Sunday, man. Thank you for stopping by and thank you for your support. So but I mean back to what I'm saying. I mean, X Plane 12 is now kind of what I looked at P3D being when I was heavy in X Plane 11. X Plane 11 to me was the fun sim. You had all the cool replays, the camera tools, and you lacked some of the super high fidelity airplanes that you had in P3D. But I think what you're seeing now is some really high fidelity stuff come to X Plane 12. Tolis of you know, love them or hate them. They support their product. They stand behind what they produce to you guys. If you have a problem with your product, they're going to help you. And they continue to push updates out. I mean, I think Tolis, in my opinion, is the lead developer for X-Plane 12 right now. I, I mean, who else is developing airplanes for X-Plane 12 that are out with this caliper? I mean, I'm, I'm genuinely asking because I don't, I don't really know. But the 320, the 319, the 321, in my opinion, I'm using them now as tools for training, for testing, and education. Hot start, thank you, Yavid. That's a good, true. That's hot start. Very, very, very well done. Uh, I, PT1 promos, thank you for the $1 bank angle check, man. I talked about, I think I talked about it on one of my podcasts, but uh, if not, I'll save it for, for, a, for a podcast later on. But uh, it was a, it was definitely severe turbulence. We couldn't descend. We had an overfly of the airport. We had to come back around. Airplane had to go under heavy maintenance checks. Uh, they had to check the tail for stress cracks and all that. Pretty nasty. Any tips before getting A320 type rating? <laughs> Learn to speak French. No, uh, don't try to don't try to come to your own conclusions on how the airplane works. Read the book and understand your laws. Understand your flight control law. If you understand what the airplane is trying to do, and when I say understand your laws, really understand your flight control protections. Because when you understand what protections you have, you know what you do not have. So when you start introducing failures and stuff during your type ride, you understand as things start breaking, you understand what protections you're losing and that helps bring clarity to what the airplane is gonna do next. So I would really say focus on the, the protections in your flight control laws. Focus on those protections, understand them, understand how they work because the big part of a type ride really is how, how do you fly the airplane when things aren't all, you know, going well. Anybody can get in here and fly a perfectly good airplane. It's when things start to go wrong that you really need to be paying close attention. So, Mick Shiggity Pilot, thank you for the 22 months of support, man. Thank you so much. Since I had my first solo, February 1st, 1975, got my PPL in... Uh, January, February, March, April 2nd. Had to count through the 2003. McShiggity Pilot. Hey, man, you still got that PPL 2003. Congratulations. That's awesome, man. That was uh, obviously had the itch for aviation, right? From 1975 all the way to 2003, you still wanted to get in there and get, get the job done for the full blown PPL. That's fantastic. Thank you for the support, McShiggity Pilot. I appreciate you. I hope you well. Hope you're enjoying your Sunday. Somebody had a good question. Mike P said, uh, how much do you have to worry about fire damaging hydraulics on the affected side? Mike P, it's definitely a concern, but at that point, there's really not much you can do about it, right? If you're burning 
fight the fire and then just deal with what the airplane gives you next. So, you know, you have your three hydraulic systems, engine two, you're really looking at the, you know, your, uh, your yellow system. Then you've got your green system on engine one that if that had a fire, but these are all, you can isolate all of these systems. So if, you know, bad goes to worst, engine fire goes to hydraulic leak and you lose hydraulics, there are procedures and protections in place in the design of the airplane to isolate your hydraulics because hydraulics is the lifeblood of the airplane. Now, with that being said, I say hydraulics is the lifeblood of the airplane and it's, that's true. Um, however, in an Airbus, and this is something I really want to save for, we might have to fire the 321 Neo up because I really want to talk about the worst possible scenario in an Airbus, honestly, is, is a dual engine failure at altitude because the electrical power, electrical power is required in this airplane to fly. Even if you have hydraulics, if you don't have electrics, guess what? You're not flying because the quote unquote cable pulleys in the mechanical backup are electrically activated. So if you have zero electrics, no battery, nothing, you are a dead stick, period. So while hydraulics are the lifeblood of the airplane, Electrical power is crucial in keeping the airplane flying. So we'll have to save that for like a 321 E. That's more like I got into an ETOPS conversation on the jump seat last night with a fantastic, uh, like, I don't know, 20-year captain, flew for them all. Uh, you know, I think he started at Reno Air, all of them. Uh, used to fly the Airbus in, in Russia. But we were talking about ETOPS and electrical and what, anyway, long story short, he brought up some great conversation about protecting the electrical system in this airplane. And I think we're going to have to bust out the Tolos 321 here pretty soon. We are looking like we're going to be a little bit heavy for 37, 39. So let's just dial in 37. I've got 77 mocks selected. We'll recruise our uh, altitude here, 370. That is set. We'll recruise it here, 37. We'll let her level off here. We are rocking back and forth pretty good. I'm not sure what that's all about. Took me a while. I'm 67 now. Can't uh, pass FAA physical anymore. Flight sim is now your substitute. Well, McShigany Pilot, you've got some wonderful sims to choose from, man. You've got X-Plane 12, X-Plane 11, if you've got it all dialed up. I honestly think, you know, we all forget about X-Plane 11. But <laughs> realistically... If you have all of the add-ons in X-Plane 11, you still have a pretty viable simulator. There's no doubt about it. But Microsoft, X-Plane, 12, 11, P3D, if you're into that. Hey, V1, when you have a moment, could you please explain all of the side stick principles? I mean, taking priority, disengaging the other. No, I cannot discuss that, and I will not discuss that publicly. Uh, thanks for the, uh, thanks, Nature, for the 90 knot tailwind, yes. 90 knot tailwind tonight. It was a 150 knot headwind yesterday. I had a long day yesterday, guys. Dallas, Houston, Houston, Denver, Denver, LA, LA, Dallas on a jump seat. Uh, but man, a long day with a repo flight as well. Also fun. You have X-Plane 12 and Microsoft. Well, there you go, McShigety. There you go. You got two of the best, in my opinion. Two of the best, in my opinion. All right, when we get to Phoenix, we are going to test out, see if soft go-around mode works. Let me, uh, let me go general settings. What other options here? Oh, backup speed scale. I want to talk about that. Let's talk about that while we're getting ready to level off. Semi-smooth. We're kind of rocking around, but we'll turn the seatbelt sign off anyway. All right, what is backup speed scale or backup speed altitude? VNAV, backup speed, altitude, autopilot to select. All right, that's because the autopilot, this is really cool, is not really capable of flying on this. So, because I have the backup speed scale on, the first officer is still receiving valid air data. It says go to autopilot two so we can actually monitor what's going on over here. Now you can see the airplane went to selected speed. Oh no, I was in selected speed, there we go. So. That's pretty cool. Uh, FD, captain side off. It wants me to turn the uh, flight director off on this side, but we're not going to do that just yet. We'll leave that ECAM there. But this is an AOA gauge, guys. We'll do an approach. This is what we're going to do. We're going to do an approach 
and then we're going to do a soft go around and then we'll try a backup speed altitude approach to land in phoenix so i think that'll be pretty fun oh phoenix towers online you know what maybe we should just dis ah, we'll keep we'll stay online we'll see what happens but i hope we don't uh, bother him too much but we're going to do a normal approach we'll do a go around hopefully we can trigger the go around soft function which is a neo function and then we will do a backup speed altitude approach, which is basically an AOA gauge. So looking at this here, you can see this is exactly what it looks like, fast or slow. And it's reading the angle of attack. And we have our AOA. You can actually see it when you walk around. I don't, are they 3D modeled on this one? It should be. Where's that AOA vein? Is it on this side? Maybe it's not a 3D model of it. It should be around here somewhere. You mentioned electrics. Is that why Sully turned on APU? Is it better to be in base or a commuter? Do you think Hat would release an aircraft? Class had 210 at 35G50. They have 19 liters slash R, which leads to a 17 kilo times cross wind. <laughs> Papa Tiger, thank you for the one dollar uh, bank angle check, man. Loaded question there. Uh, the APU thing solely, we're gonna, I'm going to save that for a, a different stream. Uh, but depending on your altitude, starting the APU could be the worst thing you could possibly do in a dual engine failure. Definitely live in base if you can do it. And I do remember the winds in Vegas was crazy, man. Pretty crazy. But thank you for your support, Papa Tango. Appreciate you, man. So you can see here, it's pretty simple. You just keep it in the green. So as you slow down, you're going to see this get to slow. As this goes to fast, as you get to fast. Now, the only issue with this is you do not have what when you're looking at this. You do not have your VFE or your, and your VFE next. You don't have your flap. Um, you can't see where your flap protections are. You don't actually know what your indicated airspeed is. So there's some techniques that are used to kind of keep you in the safe realm without over speeding the flaps and we'll talk about that when we do our backup speed scale approach but this is all it is is an aoa gauge it's pretty cool to have if you have a loss of airspeed or an unreliable airspeed event which has become more popular or prominent especially post covid because all these airplanes were sitting for long periods of time and things were getting into the uh, pedo tubes and all that um, an unreliable airspeed event could be pretty bad if the crew doesn't realize it and they don't know how to remedy the situation. A tool that Airbus has put in is the backup speed scale. Not all Airbuses have them. Um, some don't have the push button here, but some have an activation where you turn off all three. I think it's if you turn off all three ADRs, it will actually put you into backup speed scale, depending on the, on the systems that you have on that particular airframe. But again, this is another tool that's been implemented by Airbus to aid you in an unreliable airspeed event. Pretty easy to fly, honestly. It's, it's you just keep it in the green. That's all you got to do. So we'll look at that more when we're on our approach, on our second approach into Phoenix. But right now we'll go back to manage speed, 370. We're getting ready to start down. Let me pull up the bottom of the uh, thing here, enter destination uh, data. Let's do some normal stuff. Uh, let's go back here. Let's get oh Phoenix Towers online. So let me see if I can get destination ATIS. Let's see if we could send that off. Let's go perf next phase next phase, and actually, I'm just gonna set like 18 for now. There's our top of descent. We'll go mock descent and put this into below mode. You can see engines are coming back. We're starting down. Let's go received Phoenix new ATIS. We'll print that. We'll get rid of these. Can I get rid of these? I thought there was a way to get rid of this. I forgot. You're just scrolling through the papers there. But we're going to print out the new ATIS. We'll throw that up there. Phoenix uh, 3003, zero winds. Pretty calm, pretty benign day out here. We'll go zero for zero. Temperature of 1.9. And Q and H is three zero zero three. What are they landing? Oh, top right. Okay, we'll do that in a minute. Uh, two sixes. So we need to change the approach. So ILS arrival. Uh, let's do two six and two fives. Visual approach two six. I'm gonna request two six. So we'll set up for the ILS two six. Hydra, Blythe 1, insert that. 
There is our econ descent window. I don't believe we have FMS2 in this airplane. It doesn't look like it because we would be in latch mode, but we're on the descent profile. We're looking good. Let's go back to airports. Let's just get some Phoenix information. Approach. ILS 26. And scroll down here. 1385 is the min. So we'll set 1385 in the perf data. What I really like too is I think this was an X Plane 12 thing, but all that mouse lag over the Do you guys remember the mouse lag used to have an X Plane 11 on the Tolas? You don't have that anymore. At least you don't have it on this 320 Neo. I don't. I do not remember if it's on the 321 or 19, but zero mouse lag on this airplane and the uh, McDew, which is pretty nice. All right, we got our barrow set. Let's get our LS push buttons on. We have ATIS information, Juliet. Uh, we're going to continue our descent down on the star which is arrival we're on the hydra why is it hydra i always think of hydra rockets uh two six transition uh is not on here oh here we go for ils eight oh no for two six where's our two six seven left seven right is this not landy for two six? What's going on there? Let's go to our plan mode. I do like being able to bring these out. It's nice. I need to zoom that range way down though. Punt, Tesla, Cancer, Jam it, Jaggle. Uh, it doesn't I don't think it has a two six radar vectors for two six. Okay, so since towers online, hopefully they'll just give us vectors for two six. We can't really change our star without air traffic control telling us to. So we're going to continue to fly down on the Hydra as best we can. We'll just set a bottom altitude. I'm assuming for something out here at Limo. Oh, here we go. There it is. Obviously, Limo. Expect radar vectors. So Limo. 250 hour pilot move there couldn't even find the transition the 7,000 feet 210 knots so we'll dial in 7,000 feet seven is set minimums are set 1385 we're going to try to do a soft go around on this one which is kind of like an intermediate go around and i'm actually going to pull out the procedure for you real quick well, not the procedure but we'll read about it and then we will do it mateo chui what's up man good to see you dude Isn't there an enhanced bus using GPS data for speed and out? Chaos, I'm probably correct. I am uh, unfamiliar with that, though. Oh, look, our trade table comes out nicely. Forgot about that. Trade table stowed for takeoff and landing. They used to show a video. A guy got impaled from the trade table or a piece of the trade table. They don't show it anymore because I guess it's not PC, but that's why you always want to have that trade table stowed. Um, all right. Soft go around. Uh, use of soft go around is prohibited with one engine and operative. Okay, so we know that. Where is I had a give me a second, guys. Basically what it does is you don't have to go full toga to go around. Which is actually much more pleasant for the passengers and for everybody involved. The go around procedure happens much slower, which is good because if you've ever done a full blown go around at toga thrust, it's just, it's what we call asses and elbows, man. It's just, it happens so fast and it, it can, can it's never very pretty. I don't care how experienced you are. It's just never very pretty. Uh... 
And that's all. I guess I don't know why. I had a I had a little section I wanted to read to you guys, and I can't I can't find it now. But the soft go around function basically you go uh, to toga, and then you go right back to flex MCT, and that will trigger man uh, go around soft, which will. Uh, produce a climb rate that will allow the airplane to clear obstacles, but at a much lower uh, thrust setting, not full toga thrust. And if you need toga thrust at any point, though, you just go right back into toga. But you do go to toga to cycle the box into the go around, then you bring it right back into that MCT, and it will um, uh, it will uh, enter the soft go around mode. So we're going to try that today. How do you compare the flyby wire to this? I know I see that question come up a lot. It's really. <sighs> I don't really want to compare them sim like it's anything visually, but as far as you know the depth of simulation so far, I mean the fly by wire is an open source project. It's got a lot of stuff coming. It's got a lot of stuff going for it, but the systems are a little bit deeper uh, on the Tolus. I mean from my personal experience. Now there are some things I want to test out in the fly by wire mod, no doubt about it. But uh, as far as my experience with the Combining it with the kind of the, the aerodynamic properties of X-Plane, you're going to get more advanced simulation in the TOLUS at this point in time. Not to say that can change because the fly-by-wire is rapidly changing. It's rapidly advancing. The guys are working on it extremely hard, and they're pushing out crazy updates all the time. It has a phenomenal EFB. So, I, Mike P., I agree with you. I think eventually, though, they'll, uh, they'll catch up. I mean... Look what they've accomplished in a year. I mean, it's pretty crazy when you think about it. Definitely, uh, it's crazy. But if I'm going to study for a recurrent sim, uh, you'll probably see me back here in X-Plane, which we did my last big recurrent. We did it in the 319 in X-Plane 11. Pretty cool. But... All right, Sandra, out or below 220. It's doing a good job maintaining the path. Our LS push button's on, 111.75. Should have a course line down there somewhere. Everything else looks good, though. Is a soft toga only for Neo or CEO? It's only for the Neo. For the Neo. <laughs> for the Neo. It's only a Neo function. It's only a Neo function. Cam says an American Airbus captain was telling me the soft go around is more of a software upgrade than engine specific. Not sure if he was right. So it is a software upgrade. I have only seen it on the Neos. I am not sure if it will eventually come to the CEO cam, but you're, you're correct because before we never had soft go around in the Neo. Like I flew Neos without dual cooling and without soft go around mode. These are all things that have, and without, uh, yeah, I think they all had backup speed scale, but these are all things that Airbus does after the fact, and it's also very company specific. You know, different operators can add, can purchase different features for their fleet. So it can vary tremendously when you look at all the Airbuses across the globe, you know, what has what, or just because this one has soft go around and this one doesn't, doesn't mean it's incorrect. It just means that that operator on that airframe does not have that. So I think most operators in general try to keep some type of, collective uniform system on their airplanes but it doesn't always happen that way especially when you start purchasing airplanes from defunct airlines or airlines that are parking airplanes and we saw we saw this get expedited during covid right a lot of airlines not a lot but there were some airlines that went under or parked airplanes and those airplanes were bought up and picked up by other operators so that's when you start to see a mix of a mix of stuff until the company can go back and make it all uniform but 3003 on the meter we're at a 17.9 17.5 descending via the hydra we're looking good i don't know Niels, if it will come to the ceo i do not know i i kind of hope it does i'm trying let me i gotta find this thing maybe it shows me in here Let me go over here. Um, ba, ba, ba. That's there. I'm 
still looking for it. Give me a second. Soft ride, saw. Here we go. Here we go. Um, here we go. The Neos, in order to execute the soft go around, uh, set the thrust levers to the toga detent to ensure the engagement of SRS go around mode. So, again, that's why we say you still go into toga because you need to set the SRS command bars and you want to cycle the box into the go around phase. However, uh, then set the thrust levers to the flex MCT detent to engage the go around soft modes. Neos at any time, uh, if toga thrust is desired, you can simply put the thrust levers into toga and get that toga thrust. Uh, but that's your, that's kind of how it's depicted. Let me see if I can go here soft. Uh, I had a whole thing that talked about the climb rates and all that. It targets a climb rate. I forget what the number is. It's not a limitation, but it targets the soft go around will target a climb rate and performance and it will uh it will fly that instead of a full blown toga go around. In the after dark, let me see, let me take a look. Mateo Chewy says I thought you started an hour after three twenty sim pilot, not an hour later. Just realized I missed most of the stream. Promise I'll catch up with it soon. Mateo, what's up, man? Welcome. No, it's been it's been quite eventful. We did a engine fire failure, a diversion to LA. Uh, we retook off, and we're gonna go in here. We're gonna do some other stuff now with the the Neo here. It should be pretty fun. Should be pretty fun. We're gonna do a go around, then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do a backup speed scale approach. 2,000 feet per minute. Okay, it is 2,000 feet per minute. But yeah, Cam, I was looking there on my side. I, I was trying to find if they had anything about the CEOs. I don't see anything for the CEOs getting a soft go-around function. That may, that may be more than a software upgrade because I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know why they couldn't. It's not like the ne the CEO doesn't have enough power performance to do that. But there's probably something else an uh, Airbus engineer could explain. But to my knowledge, that soft go around is really only for the Neos as of now. That could definitely change. All right. It's doing a phenomenal job with the 27 knot tailwind. I've kind of been keeping an eye on this. This is pretty accurate. You'd be on the top end of the speed scale with the tailwind here in the descent. It's doing a good job. We're below 17. We're right on speed, 250 knots. Uh, we are looking pretty good. Coming over a punt, we should slow to 230 knots. I don't see... Phoenix Tower hasn't called me. 120.9. I've got him primed up, ready to go. Uh, what we'll do is for the Phoenix, we will shoot the approach. We're going to go around. We'll do an intermediate go around. We won't do a super low level one. So let's do it at like, I don't know, a little bit after Prun. What does it go around out to? It is 5,000 on this. We'll make sure we have that set. And then we'll do a backup speed scale visual approach completely. So we'll just hand fly visual approach. What is that two on the flap? That's a hoist point. Are you looking out the window? Are you talking about the window? Yeah, these are hoist points. That's what that means. I think it's like a hook. That's a hoist point. All right, 10,000 feet. We'll go ahead and get everything on here. We'll leave the turnoff lights on because we may be talking air traffic control here. 230 knots. What I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and select speed. We will activate and confirm. VAP 136, 131 is VLS. And we have 210 at Tyke. All the way down. Basically one more speed restriction. 9, 7, and 6. Doing a really good job of maintaining the descent profile. Do you think I'm going to fly X-Plane more in the future? Eh. I, look, I said it earlier. 
if we could start getting some orbic sceneries and stuff out that are like fully compatible with 12, then yes. But to me, 12, X-Plane, specifically the Tolis here, these are, these are tools to me. I want to use these airplanes as tools, running ECAMs, experimenting, explaining, and teaching flight dynamics of the airplane like we did when we took off and diverted to L.A. We saw that. I mean, that was, that was peak X-Plane. In my opinion, that takeoff we did with the engine fire, and you could see me kind of fumble through it. You saw number one roll back. We basically went from two engine toga flaps three to no engines, low speed, high AOA, roll spoilers up, airplane yawing away from you. you that was the pinnacle of X Plane 12 and the Tolis combined, in my opinion. That is what this sim shines on, is you use those scenarios to teach and to train yourself. And, I mean, I say train. Train yourself here proficiently on the sim. I mean, obviously, you would, if you really wanted to train, you have to train in a real sim in the, you know, in a level D sim. But this is about as close as you're going to get. About as close as you're going to get. Especially if GA flight training is a thing for you, definitely better. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where most everybody starts, right, is in GA aircraft. So getting the GA flight dynamics... Oh, speaking of GA, is the King Air, is the Airfoil Labs, has it been com updated for X-Plane 12? Oh, I've been, after we flew that King Air stream, I've got another itch for it. I've got another itch for that King Air, and I would love to fly the Airfoil Labs King Air in X-Plane 12. I just don't know if it's been updated yet. James Johnson says you should make a flight to Iceland where they have to land sideways if you like a challenge. I think I've seen some of those videos, those crazy uh, crosswinds. Maybe in due time, my friend. Maybe in due time. Sydney says, well said. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it, X-Plane is very much a tool, and it's, for, in my opinion, I don't have all the fancy, Sydney your sim looks pretty darn good, man. No doubt about it. Sydney has got the shaders, got the orthos. Looks pretty darn good. All right, 7,000. Well, I kind of blew through that 210 back there. We'll set 210 here. After Jamil, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's just give ourselves a vector. Because we, <laughs> it took the, it didn't update the runway transition. Oh, man, that's, that screwed me so many times. Well, at least, at least three or four times. Uh, specifically, it screwed me one time really good in uh, Pilot Edge. I'm going to self-vector myself. Heading one, zero, zero. And we'll resequence. So we'll go direct. What is the final? Jaggle. Is Jaggle on the final? Uh, no, it's not. Oh, yeah, it is. 258, so that's 078 inbound. Zero seven eight. We'll go ahead and insert that off of Jaggle. Pull select heading. Now we've got rid of the star. We're two hundred and ten. We're right at green dot. You could. We're a little bit below green dot. So yes, I'd like to see at least the flaps one here. Let's go ahead and drop flaps one. I'm gonna change the sounds back. I had all my engine sounds way up. I think the engine volume is pretty good right now, though, so we'll just leave it like that. Shaq Oatmeal, the solo man himself, is in the chat. Shaq, guys, if you're stopping by, shout out Shaq Oatmeal, did his first solo. What was it, on Friday? Thursday? One of those days, man. I, last week, you texted me when I was in the dark hole of our new house. But congratulations, Shaq on getting your first solo done, man. And that's just, I love seeing it because I remember, I remember you saying you're starting your training or you're doing training and you're, you're doing the flight sim thing. And like it just, when you first start, starting PPL training is probably one of the most daunting things that you do in aviation is just getting started. And then looking at that first solo of being seeming so far away and then actually completing it. And Shaq, man, you're a grinder, you work hard, you're a great man. I just did, I'm so happy for you. 
congratulations on your first solo. Please continue to keep me updated as you progress through your training. And I'm going to give you a call later today, man. I'll give you a call, ring. I want to hear all about it. So congrats, man. Very neat stuff. I still remember the first day I soloed. Still remember. All right, he's on a five mile for two five. What do we got going down here? Yeah, we're two thousand TA. Uh, everything should be on. Do I need to put the transponder in? Oh, there we go. Helps if you turn it on. There he is. Oh, there's a guy right there. I see the traffic. We're seven thousand two hundred ten knots. Now just waiting for them to revamp clouds, improve AA and performance. Simi video, I honestly, I mean, it might just have to do because I don't have any, and this is kind of why I wanted to keep my sim <laughs> vanilla until we had legit uh, sceneries come on. Cause I tried to hack my Orbix HD for California and then it really tanked my performance because it was like doubling up the 3D objects or something. It just, it wasn't really compatible. I mean, you can make it work, but the way I did it, it really tanked my performance, but <laughs> without it, the sim to me is running pretty good, but yes, anti-aliasing definitely needs improvement in the clouds. Yeah, no doubt. Clouds and anti-aliasing, but again, beating a dead horse, going back to, I enjoy X-Plane 12 for the, the moments of teaching, dissecting flight dynamics, looking at, looking at the, not just looking at the airplane moving flight dynamics. I mean, looking at the actual values now, whether they are, Oh, you know what? I can do external. We're going to turn that way down. There we go. That way we don't have to keep adjusting different volume sliders. But being able to just pull this up and, you know, is it maybe 100% accurate? Maybe, maybe not. But it gives you an idea. And this is such a tool to teach. I mean, if I had stuff like this when I was learning how to fly, it would have, it would have really expedited the way I retain knowledge because I am a visual learner. And when I see values changing... Even if they're not exactly correct, I can see, I go, okay, that's what I got. There. So these are the AOA percentages, and I can see where they're, where they're greater, where they're lower. And you can actually see, look, the tail, yes, the tail is essentially a wing. It is creating a, a lift. It's either creating lift up or it's creating lift down. And that's how you control the pitch of the airplane. I mean, it's just seeing these things is, uh, is phenomenal for teaching and understanding, uh, understanding aerodynamics. So really cool that's what i'm most excited about with this sim and i i really do enjoy it phoenix traffic uh spirit wing this is 357 we're on a uh left downwind for 26 7000 feet in sky harbor traffic All right, we're going to maintain this. We'll join out. So we'll join right there at Prune. How about that? Let's go ahead and descend to maintain 5,000 feet. First time open descent. Holger Teutsch, late to the party. Holger Teutsch, welcome to the stream, man. If you want to see some real flight dynamics, we did an engine fire at a Burbank in the 320neo with a diversion into LAX. Pretty cool. You get to see me kind of bobble through the procedure, but really what, it, what I did it for was to see the handling of the airplane see how the ecams are handled and the airplane does a great job which was definitely expected with tolis what is the um how do i adjust the time i'm going to i know there was a command for it midday is kind of meh meh uh i thought there was like a shift something command i forget what it is i'll figure it out later Let's go all the way down to 4,000. We'll continue coming down to 4. Get the throttle tech cam on as we get ready. K and L. Is that it? Oh, I'm tracking real world time. That's the problem. Let me do this. Done. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Okay. I'm going to bring the time back. Bring the time back a little bit just to make it a little bit more a little bit more juicy than uh, midday X-Plane 12 without any scenery. That's just on me. 
Night lighting looks pretty darn good. I mean, look at that pedestal. That looks pretty darn good. Sun's coming up early morning. Five for four. Tower's online. Let's go ahead and give him a call. What the hell? One two zero point nine. Echo Delta ten Delta uh, Nick Cross Run ninety five right at Fox Run four. Let me see if I'm in this guy's airspace here. Thousand to go. Phoenix Tower, good afternoon. Uh, Spirit Wings 357, 4.9, descending 4,000 with information. Kilo requesting the ILS 26. Wings 357, Phoenix Tower, hello. Continue. Uh, I can't really give you anything unless I can give you any clearance. So that's about it. So uh, just continue. I'll just continue. Uh, Spirit Wings 357. Cool. Let's go ahead and rip it in here. 010 ish. Fly by view. Do I think X Plane 12 physics are more accurate than Microsoft? Yeah. I think they're more accurate uh, in, in certain phases. You know, I think Microsoft does a great job in basically normal flying. But when you start doing abnormal stuff in Microsoft, I get some finicky vibes. And I really think that I think that will change with time Good afternoon, uh, as the sim continues to develop. But, you know, normal flying in X-Plane, I'm sorry, in Microsoft is not, what am I trying to say? Normal flying in Microsoft is good. Abnormal flying in Microsoft, when you start introducing failures, such as engine failures or anything like that, it gets a little bit iffy. That looks pretty good, though, right there. Wow, look at that. That actually looks pretty darn good. See, that, I like that. This looks good. That looks good. If I could just have Sim Aviator come visit and set up my Sim with all the juicy add-ons. I'm going to slow to 180. Basically turn 320, 4000, cleared approach. Cam, we're going to do a visual approach next. Or we're going to do a soft go around on this one. Cat 3 Dual Apollo 1 plus 2, Glide Slope Blue, Loke Blue. Approaching VFE next, minus 10, extend Flaps 2. Flaps 2, 180. This airplane lives at Flaps 2, 180. Definitely a piece of eye candy there. I mean, that. I mean, come on. I know there's some aliasing issues, but. This is the default toll is 320 Neo. And when you look at this and you see how far Tolis has come from when they first released the 319 X Plane 11, it's just phenomenal. Loke Star. Five point three on the gas. We got a little extra gas for the go around. That's perfect for a Neo. Beautiful. Got the banana bus coming into Sky Harbor today. Black Box says inertia is pretty much missing. Yeah, inertia in Microsoft is an issue. Yeah, inertia. Inertia is a really hard thing to get right in any sim, honestly. The best sim, if you guys really want to talk flight dynamics and what's the best flight, Digital Combat Simulator is literally the closest thing to real flight dynamics as you're going to find on a pc so there's glide slope star growing altitude is set 5000 blue glide slope star low star we'll go ahead and manage the speed trickle on down i think when we hit uh we're going to try to do a go around soft, maybe at 3,000. We'll do it at 3,000. What's the landing elevation out here? 1130, 8, so 12, 2200 is 1,000. All right. So let's say we're coming down. Flaps three. Gear's still up, I know. I'm going to leave the gear up. I'm, I should work with the gear up. All right, so let's just say... We get a go around here. So, Spear Wings 357, uh, go around. So, here we go. 
Man MCT. Oh, it's out to prune. Flaps one. Maybe we were too high. Ah, uh, spring sweeping seven. We're on the go around, sorry. One twenty two point eight, we'll give you a call right back on final uh three wings three seven X. Interesting. I wonder if we were their speed out star, we cycled the prune. I wonder if we were too high. We might have been too high. What does the star signify? That means it's a capture mode. The uh, Airbus pilots in Toulouse call it Death Star. Because if you mess with anything right now when you're in out star mode, you go to vertical speed mode. All right, there's our out. Interesting. So it did a good go around there. I'm wondering why we didn't trigger the go around soft. We're, we might have been too high. I know the 321 does it. We'll have to look at that. Let's go ahead and re we're going to continue to fly the mist here. We're at 5,000 feet, 210 knots. So let's go ahead and do a backup speed altitude approach. Yeah, it went into climb mode. So I'm thinking there, chaos. I'm, I don't know. I, I almost want to try it again. Shoot. All right, let's go ahead and uh, put us on down one, basically. Three, five, zero, five thousand feet. Let's go perf. Let's go activate, confirm. Let's go direct. Jaggle. We've got to redo all this again. Jaggle, zero, seven, eight. I'm just going to re-extend the box. I know it's probably slowing down on me right now. Insert that. No nav intercept. Normal. Pool for heading. Select speed. 210. Keep coming right. We'll go zero, zero, 080. Zero. 320 Neo is still pre release, correct. Still pre release. Is it like capturing Boeing? Yes. Uh, Niels, the 320 Neo is going to release on the March 20th as of now. That is the planned release date, March 20th, 320. Hmm. Now, I'm actually kind of puzzled. Uh, we must have missed a trigger there. Because I know the Tolis will do it. I've seen it happen. Pilot error on that one. But go around works very nice. As you can see, a go around is non existent, just a little extra flying. All right, let's go ahead and do a backup speed scale approach, shall we? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's wait till we turn final. We'll call him back. Let's go ahead and extend flaps one. Beautiful sunrise in the desert. Cheat five more degrees left, and let's descend back down to. Uh, we'll cut it in. We'll go three thousand. <laughs> Steven says all sorts of problems with this neo today. Gonna have to talk to that one guy in the Discord who works at the Airbus plant in Mobile. I know, man. Definitely, I need to get out there. I would love to go tour the Airbus plant in Mobile. That would be pretty neat. All right, we're down to three thousand. Let's try this again. As soon as we turn final, I will. Uh, I will th activate our backup speed scale, and I'll just show you guys. It's a AOA. That's all it is, is AOA. Let me get this. It's ready to go. Cool. Actually, we can probably just do it now, right? Let's just... Now, 
Uh, if air data reliable, at least one reliable air data use. If unreliable airspeed, unreliable airspeed procedure applies. So we'll say that's all been accomplished. So now I'm going to go uh, manual thrust. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go flight directors off. I'm going to give myself the bird. Disengage the autopilot. Should have done that first. Autopilot's off. I'm going to pop this out so we could see it. So what we are doing is we are... Look at this, I'm getting fast. So let's go ahead and slow down a little bit and bring the power back. I'm gonna bring it right back into the green. I wanna get my lights on, I won't, I won't have time for that. We'll start our turn inbound. All right, so I'm descending at 3,000, about 800 feet to level off. I've got my bird on, the bird is really crucial in my opinion, especially when you're in a backup speed scale scenario, because you want to see your AOA. The angle of attack, actually, if you want to know, is right now is between that center dot and the top of the tail of the airplane. That is your angle of attack, or the wing, excuse me, the wings of, your, of that airplane there on the bird. That is your angle of attack. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slow down a little bit more here. And if I manage speed, it won't do anything. We're going to select, I think it was like, what, 148? What's our VAP? Going on just to see. It's about 135, just as a reference. Exactly. In the procedure, you'd be able to do all this and get it calculated. All right, 3,000. Let's go ahead and level off. So we've got to split the horizon. As I level off, I'm going to add a little bit of power here. Phoenix Tower, Spear Wings 357, we're turning final uh, 26. Two six, clear to land, Spear Wings 357. All right, we are clear to land, 26. We're going to level here about 3,000 feet. And it actually, it's almost easier to fly in backup speed scale than when you're trying to maintain an airspeed because, look, you have that whole green band, whole green band to look at. A little bit low. Should be at 3,000. Oh, we'd climb back up. Don't really want to climb if you can help it in real life. We'll climb back up. I can see the runway out there now. We'll get we'll get centered on it. Get a little slow now. Watch what happens if I go flaps too. Look at that. Look at look at the AOA changing. You see that? So now with flaps two coming out there, I gotta watch it. You don't want overspeed. Look now we're gonna we're right on the verge of being fast. So there's techniques that uh, in the procedure for unreliable airspeed that will help you as you extend flaps stay within the limits. But all right, now look, see, I'm, I have my power back. The AOA is coming way back. I want to keep it right in the middle if you can help it. Get back on that runway there. We're clear to land, 2-6. Once we intercept the glide slope, we'll go gear down. Amantha, you are really stress testing the early access. Of course, that's what I'm here for. You don't think that I would just give the 320 Neo a pass because it's tollless, do you? Uh, we're st we stress test. That's why <laughs> any any dev that hands me an airplane for like pre-release, I always wonder if at the back of their mind they're like, oh gosh, should we really do it? Because I'm gonna st I'm gonna test it. I'm not just gonna go in A to B and fly around. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna look for stuff. And uh, right now, Tolus is passing with flying colors. Only My only question is that, that soft go-around. I don't know if that was a pilot error or uh, maybe we're missing something. All right, here comes the glide slope. So I'm going to set about 50% thrust. We'll go gear down, arm the speed brakes. I'm going to get myself towards the bottom of that green AOA. I'm going to go ahead and go flaps three. As flaps three comes out, watch that AOA. Look at the AOA changing on the backup speed scale. Now that is, there's, that's normal. I forget there's a way to, if I actually did the procedure in the book, I think there's a way to uh, remedy that. But we're just kind of flying by the seat of our pants or flying by the seat of our backup speed scale, I should say. 
All right, flaps config full, gear down, spoilers on, thousand stable, clear to land, a little bit high, correcting. Five knot crosswind there. A little bit fast. That's all right. I, I'll be. I'd rather be a little bit on the fast side than the slow side, especially when you don't actually know your speed. Two whites, two reds. We're catching up to that glide slope, nice and easy. Hundred above. I guess I'm flying a half dot high on this approach. I see the pappy, so we're visual. Minimum. All right, this is actually my first normal landing in this airplane, or normal if you can call it that. Beautiful. Spoilers, reverse green. Deselling. The shadow of that airplane looks pretty cool. I wonder if I have a funky curve on my rudder pedals. 70 knots. Left turn one able, and uh, we're parking uh, west side here. North side. Bravo, Charlie 7, Charlie. Thanks for the ATC for Spear Wings 357. We'll see. Ya. All right, now I'm going to disconnect from Vatsit uh, because I want to look at the replay. So we'll go ahead and disconnect. Now let's just go right into replay mode. Let's take a look at that, shall we? Let's see how we did. Back it up. I'm using the MFG crosswinds. I don't know. I probably have to adjust them a little bit. I'm feeling like I'm... <laughs> it's almost like I'm not used to better ground friction. I'm used to the Microsoft ground friction. So I'm doing a lot of excess pilot-induced and oscillations. But here we go. Man, that... That looks pretty dang good. I'm going to actually take a screenshot of that. I'm going to take a screenshot of that. Uh, here we go. Play it. I'll turn up the external a little bit. Let's see how we did here. Bring the power out. A little bit, a little bit more flare, maybe. Little aerodynamic braking, thrust reversers. That's pretty good. Probably could have had a better touchdown. That was a little nowhere near XP 72s landing. He absolutely buttered it. Let's watch it again. Oh, let's watch a flyby view. What are we doing? Slow mo it here. Man, that the, I do miss the flyby cam. Come on, that flyby cam is awesome. Burp. I mean, pretty textbook landing for an Airbus. Definitely not a butter, though. Definitely not a butter. Where do we touch down? Right about there. All right. Nice having replay. Absolutely. I mean, that was still pretty good. That was still pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. 
Well, when did we start? 11? It's 140. We might have to uh, double up the streams today. We'll have to see. I'm still feeling like, I feel like now that I've experienced X-Plane 12 again, I need to experience some Microsoft again to kind of compare while it's fresh in my mind again about like the flight dynamics and stuff. But talking about the Tolis right now, a 320 Neo, we're definitely gonna have to fly this airplane again and we will fly it again. I'm going to look up uh, some more abnormal stuff that I wanna work through in the ECAM. I know they've got it modeled. I like flying the Tolis. Uh, the Neo here specifically because the ECAMs can be slightly different between a CEO and a Neo. And there's some uh, that I want to check out here on the 320 Neo indeed. Uh, wouldn't mind seeing a flyby wire stream. There you go. You know what chaos? We might have to fire up the flyby wire in, in like another hour or so. I'm going to take a quick lunch break. We'll come back while everything is fresh and hot in memory. Maybe we'll load up the 320 Neo in Microsoft as well. But what I have seen so far in this Tolis 320 Neo is really, really well done. The performance is great. It always is with Tolis. The cockpit, the textures, the modeling are way better than what they have been in the past. I think Tolis really put in the time to kind of sharpen up those aspects and i'm loving these wing tech honestly i love this wing texture this wing texture is spot on this wing looks this looks great the flaps hanging down got a little bit of a gloss sheen to it so absolutely loving it guys if you're tuning in late and you want to see like some really hardcore aerodynamics in play check the beginning of the stream out we did the engine fire single engine land in lax thank you all for the support today and coming in and donating and just hitting the like button being part of the x-plane 12 game we're going to stream again here in another hour or so so i hope to see you back for a little bit of a comparison stream so far I told us i'm really liking what they've done here with this 320 neo i look forward to flying it more and maybe taking some into some weather maybe doing some auto lands on our next couple of uh, next couple of flights we'll have to do a 320 neo auto land here coming up on the next one so until the next time which should be later today. Get those Sia's in chat, especially if you're a new member. And uh, I feel like I got to do my normal sign-off because we always do normal sign-off, but I will be seeing you here soon. So until I see you again later today, stay safe, stay healthy, get a couple landing practices in. And uh, yeah, we'll see you here in about another hour or so. I'll get a scheduled stream up here in not too long. So thank you again, Tolis. Guys, see you in a few. I'm V1, obviously. See ya!